What's going on, teamers? Welcome to Digipod, the digital podcast. I'm your boy, Varney. And today I've got, you know, I don't even have to introduce them. Do I have to introduce you guys anymore? We all know who you are. It's Dan and Mike for our audio listeners. I guess I'll continue to introduce yeah, yeah. you. Yeah, I'm the one left named Dan. So, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to, I know it's hard to see our names on here, you know, but it, it's there. <laughs> it's all right, Dan. Don't yell at me this time because I'm not using like, a proper mic or anything. Don't, don't come at me. So it's, you'll be saved from the wrath of our fans for yeah. now. Yeah, Mike right. is in California. Yeah, He's I'm in the good life right now. I, I'm out in uh, where the fuck am I? California. Um, you, I thought you said like San Diego or something. Like no, that, right? I was no. I flew into San, San Jose. Gino? I'm out San, in um, oh San Jose, but I'm but I'm like an hour and a half away from San Jose right now. Uh, I don't fucking know. All I know is I looked up whatever town I was in. I looked at the town I was in. I typed in things to do. And uh, the number one thing that came up was Bass Pro Shop. So we're not in a good, we're not in a fun town. Bass Pro Shop? <laughs> yeah, I drove past it. Uh, yeah. I only got lunch. I drove past it. Fucking biggest Bass Pro Shop. What are you in? Like some small town in like in a small in a city or something? I don't honestly, nope. I don't know. You guys still hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah, I was trying, to look, I was trying to look. I was trying to look up like what the fuck where I am. I, I just don't remember. Um, I'll tell you. You guys keep talking. When I find it, I'll leave. He's he's somewhere on the West Coast. It is like six thirty for him, so his sleep schedule life, is put off by know, three hours. Beautiful weather, California. You know, yes, sir. Right. I mean, we're California having good weather right now, so it's not too bad, right? It is. It's all right, but these mosquitoes are fucking ruthless, bro. <laughs> oh, I yeah. swear, I've got like. I've got at least 10 bites over my body. Like, <laughs> I, f- I feel like I've been a fucking mosquito stew toy. I like reach down to like, just like, r- like, you know, casually like rub my leg. I casually ha- pass over a fucking mosquito bite. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I want to scratch it now. And that one out, like, you scratch that. And then I'm like, oh, shit, there's another one to scratch. And then you just find more. And then you're just like, fuck. <laughs> I do so feel that. Met- I- I haven't been get, I haven't been getting bit too badly this year. It seems like I mean usually I don't get bit like crazy anyways, but like and then the itches is not that bad for me. Yeah, I don't they, know. they love my sweet sweet blood. It's <laughs> filled with uh, tomato sauce and other sugars yeah, because of the power. Sure, yeah, yeah. Also, I, I'm in Manteca. Manteca, California. Man- Manteca. Yes, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Sound like a, it sounds sound like a native. Of- Sound like a Native American uh, spot right there. Could be Manteca. I'm going with Manteca. Feels feels right in my heart. Now Manteca. No man, Manteca <laughs> sounds a lot like more. Point zero zero five percent Native American. I feel it right here. Yeah, I feel it, it in here. <laughs> <laughs> feel my my ancestors. <laughs> I'm of almost them. positive it's Manteca. That sound. Oh no, no, I'm wrong. It's Manteca. It's Manteca. Oh, let's go. <laughs> it's Manteca. I would have seen the T E C A and I would have assumed Native American slash like whatever from you know yeah. Mexico native Mexico yeah. been like man Manteca. Manteca 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 <laughs> Illuminati Manteca 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 That's great. Oh, <laughs> sound like um the the one uh amigo saw right there. The one oh amigo god. song, yeah, where he's like what Illuminati. The hell is that? Oh, oh my god, boy. you don't know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, <laughs> Mike knows. He's more cultured than you sometimes. I am more cultured than Vardy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was watching some uh, Disney Channel uh, originals with uh, my daughters today. I was watching some uh, Let It Shine 2012, Tyler James Williams, and I was watching some Cheetah Girls because you know we are sisters. We stand together. <laughs> Take a step back. I could, I like Cheetah Girls. Man, I, Cheetah Girls is big. This man just said Cheetah Girls. That's that crazy. Like Cheetah Girls. But, but what the, who the fuck? Like, what the, you said Let It Shine when you said that actor's yeah, full man. last name? Who the fuck is that, Tyler bro? James, you don't know, you know Tyler James Williams. Not a clue. No. Yes. Everybody hates Chris. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my hey, so, goodness. So, so which character in Everybody Hates Chris? 
the like, titular character. Oh. <laughs> Chris. Oh, actual Chris like Rock. Chris. Oh, yes. okay, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't. I don't know his real name. His. <laughs> oh my good lord! He stars in Abbott Elementary. He's a fucking amazing actor. Yeah, He's yeah. yeah I've seen Abbott Elementary. Yeah, I've seen Abbott Elementary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, t- guess, Tyler I, James Williams. I is guess full me name. and Dan aren't uh, part of the Disney cult. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, no, clearly not. I was more of a I mean, Cartoon like Network kind of guy movie myself. That he was in. Same, so. same. Yeah. Cartoon Network yeah. all the Car- way. Cartoon yeah, Network. I can. I can I could talk Cartoon Network, you know, sugar, spice, everything nice. Of course, it'd be Power Club Girls, but the first one you go to. Vardy, I swear yeah, that to God. Not, that was I not swear you, I, I swear your marriage is like a, a hoax. I swear to God. <laughs> he was like, I'm I'm hiding my true, um, <laughs> true, it's true called feelings a, out here. It's called listen, a listen. beard. When I yeah. was a kid, when I was a kid, watching Ed, Ed and Eddie, there you go. That's a good show. Yeah. Blue haired girl from the Kanker Sisters. I was yeah. like, that's a I sexual could, awakening for me as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, I'm, I'm right not the there. I'm right, get sexually I, awakened by. <laughs> I'm right there with you, brother. I've also been physically abused by my significant others. Not the current one. Current one's fantastic. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> you got crazy on that one real quick. Hey, we're a Digimon podcast. <laughs> Not a, a general <laughs> cartoon. I'll whatever. We're just we're in some 30 second I don't think we've we got no locals once. to talk about. Yeah, we, we got no locals to talk about, so we can talk about we can talk bullshit for the next ten minutes. <laughs> I, you are a listener and you're listening and you're like, I thought I was listening to a Digimon card game podcast. Rest assured. We're getting there, we're getting there. <laughs> 10% a Digimon card game podcast. But first and foremost, Life. it is three guys talking absolute and complete utter fucking bullshit. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, for sure. we just happen yeah. to settle on Digimon collectively, you know, but really we could have st- sat here and talked about anything. I'm telling you, we gotta yeah. make a general podcast where we're allowed to talk about anything and, and see how that goes. Well, maybe if, you know, the efforts go well in finding a podcast editor that, you know, possibly we can explore other podcast opportunities, which maybe going off of that note. Yes. Uh, so listeners, if you know anybody or you yourself are somebody who would like to be paid uh, for editing the DigiGuard United podcast which is only Digipod, <laughs> the digital podcast right now. <laughs> but if you would like, if you are, expl- you know, you know, anybody who's like looking for some part time work or any kind of side jobs, side gigs or anything along those lines. Um, I, we are looking for a podcast editor. If you guys know the history of the channel, you know, I do all of our editing. And while it has been great, I cannot do it all. I realistically, you know. The, our YouTube members, they're supposed to get podcasts a week in advance. I have not given them their podcast just yet. They're going to get a double pod. They're going to be seeing this week's pod and next week's pod by like tomorrow. But like, <laughs> you know, uh, it's just a lot. And, uh, it's something I'd like to get off my plate. So if you know anybody who'd like to make a couple bucks, you don't need any experience. Obviously, you know, experience is great. But I know with experience comes a rise in price. And keep in mind, you know, we're just three guys who shoot the shit. <laughs> so we, we don't have all the money in the world to pay somebody, but there are definitely we can offer some sort of some form of monetary compensation as well as other things, other perks and whatnot. If you are interested in that, please do reach out to me. Let me know. Uh, I can teach anybody. It's not that hard. I have templates. It literally it's like a I want to say like two to three hours. You download the pod from our platform. We use Riverside here. You throw it into my template that I've given created on Adobe Premiere Pro, which if you don't have Adobe products, we will pay for. It is not a problem. We can pay for Adobe products for you. Um, You then basically just do some minor adjustments, make sure it's all lined up. It sounds good between Adobe Audition as well as Adobe Premiere. And then you pass it over to me. Uh, I'll take that, get it uploaded to YouTube with all of our stuff and it'll be compensated. So yeah, if you're interested, reach out. It'd be cool. I'd love to get this off my plate and try to focus on producing other bigger better content such as our 
What are they called again? Retro Rumbles. I was I blanked for a second. I blanked for a second. Uh, Such as our Retro Rumbles. I was waiting to see yeah. if you were going to say it or not. Yeah. Yeah, Such as our Retro Rumbles. Yeah, we would like to recruit you to be the DGU editor. That's right. I'm talking specifically to you. The person who's Basically. definitely going to reach out to us and become the DGU editor. 100% absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. positively. We have all of our... Well, I can't say all, but I have... I think all of our like round one of retro rumbles recorded, but I just don't have to, I just Adrian finally got me his like <laughs> last week. <laughs> but now that I have them, I can actually sit down and edit them. But like I said, before I edit that, I have to edit the podcast and I have to put out some clips from the podcast because there are a good portion of you who may not watch or listen to the whole podcast, but you watch our clips and we appreciate you. Because the clips are very cool. It's really cool to see the engagement that you guys give us on the clips. You know, I personally, I was on the fence about it. Then I started doing it because I was trying to fill some content gaps. And I figured, you know what? Let's clip some. Let's just clip some of the content. But also, Mario put out a video where he was basically doing a talking head video. And I was like, we do an hour and a half talking head video. Wouldn't it be cool if we could get the points that we want to talk about from podcast and put it in a, you know, 10, 20, even 30 minute talking head video clip, which is how the clip started. Um, and they've worked phenomenally. You know, the, we've been able to get across a lot of the points that we've wanted to hit. Uh, you know, I'd love to go back like retrospectively and like clip some of the older stuff that we've talked about, but like that's something for me to discuss to discuss with future editor son. So Whoever future editor sons know that there will be work. <laughs> so reach out because <laughs> we got it coming. Uh, anyways, with yeah, that being said, I clip our like our, like our first seasons stuff. Like absolutely people not. Were, people are going to be like, yo, what? What are we talking about? <laughs> this is a absolutely different not. age of Digimon. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, a time far gone now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Online nationals, season bro? one. Yeah, that's right. Online nationals, one. We don't even we don't have a season one of Digipod. We 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 started with season two right off the bat. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. That I mean, yep. Okay. We didn't take like a year hiatus in between season one and two. That that never happened. Which speaking of, bro, what are we like a year and a half of like pretty Constant. much consistent week weekly pods? Yeah. Wow. Outside of maybe one week or something like that. Yeah. Good for us. Good job. I'm, I'm not going to clap on that. I quit for it for a moment. That's all. That's all. I'll, I'll clap for Dan and Barney. That's all Dan yeah, and Barney. Right. I took a break for a while. Pat on the shoulder, you know? Yeah. Pat on the shoulder. Yeah. I'll give myself a firm handshake for coming back. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyways, yeah, we had to bring back the original Michael because the the backup Michael wasn't cutting it after a while, you know. <laughs> yeah, they were like, they were like, let's replace Michael with backup Michael because he also likes Bebop. I have other things <laughs> to offer, exactly guys. Okay. What it was. That's exactly what it was. Uh huh. Yeah, no, I, I knew what was happening. I, I got it. Listen, the, the the big difference was that one liked era of Udramon, and the other one liked Paiodramon, which it's pronounced Paiodramon, not, not Paiodramon. <laughs> we, we were talking about this the other day. I was like, it's Paiodramon. Yes. Yes. I am a, I'm a Nazi when it comes to Digimon, like, pronunciation. Only Digimon, though. Everything else goes out the window. Like, uh, what's that word that Joe likes to mock me for? Um... Oh, there's like there's a few words, but I don't remember what it is. But Joe will know as he listens to this. Fair. Um, like Joe Pemberton? No, Joe Mojo. Mojo, oh, Joe, Joe. okay, okay. I thought you were talking about Joe, like our our friend. Nah, I was like, not, has been around. Can a you say, not can you say Avril, Avril Levine for us again? Yes, uh, yes. There we go. Avril Levine. <laughs> yeah, that wow. was crazy. Wow, that was that was uh, cringe right there. That was wild. But um, yeah, I felt like what happened <laughs> is uh, you guys replaced like like watching Blue Clues when Steve left. That's how it felt when <laughs> you guys tried to replace me. This man said Blue I, Clues. I liked Joe. Okay, he was no Steve. 
but I liked Joe. Now Nobody the guy that Adrian. the guy that <laughs> succeeded. Let me stop. Joe, <laughs> Let me stop. That guy. I don't know. I got, we got people saying I'm not polling well in the DMs. <laughs> <laughs> no, this podcast is all over the place what? already. What is what? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, w- I want you guys to vote. <laughs> vote? What are we voting on? If, if you had <laughs> hashtag I stand for Dan. If you had to elect one leader of the United States, who would you vote for? Varney, Dan, or Mike? <laughs> Oh, let's God. see. Let's truly see how well Mike pulls. A vote for me <laughs> is a vote for uh, really anything you guys want. A vo- no, 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 nope. A vote for Mike is a vote for Mike vowing to destroy all ants. That's true. <laughs> Man, actually, you know what? This podcast is already so fucked up. I'm just gonna give my ant spiel real quick. I found out yeah. today. I found out today. There's one quadrillion ants in the United, like yes. in the entire world. There's one quadrillion yes. ants. There's eight billion people in the entire world. That means 125 million ants could attack each person individually. <laughs> that is an extinction level event that we are not How talking many about. How they, many once they again? gain full, <laughs> once they gain full clarity and like become sentient it's fucking we're over it's done for us bro how many ants again per, per one human? quadrillion no, no per but person. how many per, per oh, person 125 million per person <laughs> so what you need is to start building right now a massive bug spray I don't just know what carry half a whole of, flamethrower with you the whole time. <laughs> I don't know what half of one quadrillion is, but we might be able to take out half, right? But we're not taking uh, half. We're going a half down. of one quadrillion? Probably a trillion? No. Probably. A quadrillion? I don't uh, know. What the fuck? Yeah, a million, billion, trillion, quadrillion. Half of quadrillion, so 500 trillion? Is that what that is? Is that how that works? I don't know. Yes. Either way. Possibly. I don't know. I mean, I think that's, I think after trillions, quadrillion. I'm not 100% sure though. I'm no expert. All I know is we would lose. All Mike <laughs> knows is that a vote for him means he will save you from ant eradication. <laughs> yeah. Vote Michael vote for, for Motto, one less m- 2024. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, a vote for me is probably a vote for chaos. So the other <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can't be that much different than what we got going on. Imperial jamming 24 <laughs> 7. Just so every, every deck that's not Imperial is banned. <laughs> Hey, what's the meta, Imperial? What's the best deck in the format, Imperial? Imperial? What's the worst deck in the format, Imperial? Imperial? <laughs> <laughs> no, Imperial Virus. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's enough bullshit. And y'all already saw the title of the pod. It's BT17 tier list today. Woo! Oh. We've got some fun stuff to be doing. So let's uh, pop over into it. This is the tier list. Y'all already know what it is. We've got five categories. These are categories we've been rocking with since the beginning, since the definitive BT13 versus Royal Knights tier list. Which was like 95% accurate. Something like that. That we you know. then used for the definitive BT15. Beginning. Sorry, not beginning. Exceed Apocalypse. Did we do one for that one? Or did we skip 15? Yes. No, we did 15, right? We did. Yeah. 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 BT 15. And we did it again for the definitive BT 16 beginning observer tier list. So are you ready for the definitive BT 17 secret crisis tier list? I'm pretty excited. Yes, sir. We're always ready. What's up, Mike? I said, I'm pretty excited. I'm ready. I'm pumped. So as always, we've got our five categories. These five categories, we don't define decks by tier one, 1. 1.5 or A, B, C, et cetera here. The reason we don't do that is because those tiers aren't indicative of a very important thing, which is player skill. Like a lot of people will take a, a good deck and then be like, well, it's not like the best deck of the format. So it's a tier 1.5 deck, which is true, but it's also kind of not true because sometimes it can really depend on you know, who is piloting that deck? For example, we've said in the past, because we probably said on every tier list, so we're going to fucking sit here and say it again. Alphamon 
is the biggest definition of not a good deck by any means, but in the hands of Leechy King, it is he is the fucking goat. godlike. He can that top man, of it in any format. Any format, that man is getting top four easy. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it makes no bad. sense. And it's not a tier like if you were to put it in a tier, it would realistically be a tier three deck, right? Possibly sure. tier two. But in our tier list, we don't even we don't look at that. We're like, all right, what does this deck do? How does it play into the meta? Is it good enough? No. Eh, maybe Rogue Sleeper, no. But if in the hands of somebody it can do well, pilot orienting. So that's why we do things like this. Meta defining, we define these as the decks that every deck in the format has to play around it's not to say that this is going to be the best deck in the format although generally they are it's just to say to beat to compete let's say to compete to in be the, the meta, best you gotta beat the best to, to be the best you gotta beat the best exactly the contenders are the decks that everybody's gonna play you're gonna see those decks in regionals you're gonna see it in the results like don't be surprised if you see it there. Rogue and Sleeper picks are exactly that. Rogue and Sleeper is a little bit different in terms of, you know, terminology. A rogue pick is something that does well into some matchups, but not into other matchups. And Sleeper picks are just something more like, oh, well, nobody was going to fucking <clears throat> expect that. You can't always, you know, say, ah, I knew this was going to be a Sleeper pick. But, you know, as we go through the list, we can definitely look at decks and think, hmm, maybe this could potentially be a Sleeper pick. I already defined pilot uh, pilot oriented and then casual is exactly that they're casual decks they're not well suited to playing in a competitive environment it doesn't mean that you can't don't think it means that we're saying your deck is shit it just means that if we were to guess you're not topping an event with this deck for yep. example last format leopardmon was a casual fucking deck and we were proven wrong as somebody took it to what was it like a Top four, top sixteen. No, was I it a top sixteen? I know it was top it was, sixteen. I don't know. What it, it was a was, top. Though. It was definitely yeah. It was some top in an EU regional, and I was like, oh well, somebody fucking did it. So you know, by virtue of how we define it, it's not a casual deck. It's a pilot oriented deck. Yeah. So that's how we do things here. Let's pop into <clears> the tier list. The first deck we're gonna talk about oh, because it's before the first we talk one. about oh. the tier list, I wanted to yeah, mention yeah. our deck, like our tier list and our meta is gonna look. I, our metas always look different than Japan. Our metas are going to look a little bit more different this time because we don't have a lot of the uh, promo cards that, that Japan promos. had. So, um, big ones, the name that we're missing is Agu Bond Ace and Goblins. I think those are the two really impactful promos, right? Yeah, they Cyber are... Jermon is in that. Cyber uh, Jermon, yeah. Magi Jermon is part of that. But a very important one, even more so important than Aquabond and Gobblebond, are the scramble cards. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Like, some of these decks are still going to be good regardless, but some of these decks, some we're really needed with scramble. scramble cards. Some definitely were better with scrambles, and some just abused the living shit out of scramble cards. <laughs> Fenry. <laughs> so, right, right. Absolutely. Yep. When we talk about this tier list, yeah, we're going to be talking about it without what is known as the LM3 limited card set 2024 cards. You guys can look that up. That consists of Agubon and Gobblebond, Sukuyamon Maid Mode Ace, which is super unfortunate because we got Sukuyamon support this set, Shivamon Ace, Cybertron Ace, Megidramon Ace, which is another big blow for Gallantmon, and then, of course, the Scramble cards. Yeah, I think, my opinion because that card is really good for Gallimon. I yeah. think that's the best Gallimon support we've gotten in years, bro. Yeah, that's and, a fact. And, that's a whole fact. Yeah, I, I forgot how uh, I forgot that, that card isn't included. In my opinion, I think that's really what would have made Gallimon a, a better pick this format too. I say, I say, I agree so much. That, that card, card is at least a two of in that deck, in my opinion. So. Let's just run it over real quick. I'll just I'll do a quick overview of all the cards just so that they the viewers know what they are and why they're important. So Megidramon Ace, like we said, you know, it's an ace card. It's for Gallantmon. Uh, big thing, it pops 11k or, or lower Digimon on Digivolve on play. So super nice. More importantly, it has the first protection effect for an ace. And no, that's not as crazy as it sounds. It just says when it would leave the battle area, you play a Geomon from its source or from your trash, and then you play 
that McEdramon as its bottom Digi Evolution card. So Overflow does not trigger, and then it has Correct. an inherited. The inherited is that you add 5,000 to the maximum DP that you can choose with that Digimon's DP based deletion of X. So it immediately buffs up any Gallantmon to make it like by a lot <laughs> super heavy hitting it can just it can wipe out any like for example a crimson mode ace is doing 15k with this you're doing 20k uh, it's uh, this was a really good card for Gallimon. Gallimon getting a native ace especially one that digivolves for three on top of the Gralmon in name just a uh, such a good card it's a shame we're not getting that the bond cards were super not busted but just super good cards for revitalizing very old decks. Both bonds digivolved when you have two or fewer security on the respective rookie for a cost of three, which, and that was a blast digi or an alt digivolution requirement. So because they're an ace, you have an Agumon chilling there. Ah ha ha. Blast into Agu bond. Shenanigans Crazy. proceed with them. Combo that with the likes of like the Omni deck because you're already playing Agumon. The same thing with the bond. You're already playing Gobblemons. You know, you could. Throw a couple of these cards in there. Both of those were just really good, basically newly retrained versions of the old Agu and Gabu Bond. So really good cards. Unfortunate that those are not coming. I guess I'll talk about Sukuyamon real quick because it's like, I guess, somewhat relevant. Not that Sukuyamon topped, but it basically lets you play something, you know, tamer or option or plugin, I should say, on top of your security. And then when one is used, you get to neg an opponent's Digimon. So it was okay. Uh, you had Shivamon, which was another okay one. It, in my opinion, this really didn't do much. It was just a uh, suspend and plus 3k if you have three or more, or bottom deck if you have uh, three or fewer. And then while it's suspended, it's not affected by the effects of your opponent's Digimon. So good for Tyrant, but Tyrant's got so many other things that they can play. It's probably a null factor. You got Cyber Dramon, which is such a big blow for like Machine Dramon, for Justimon, for any SOC deck. Because it's a black, it's the first black ace. We don't have a black ace in the game yet. This is the well, first, well, first level five. Black yeah. Ace. yeah. Sorry. We have the first we have mono more color. The mm, I fuck, I forgot about and that shit. Sorry. Right. Yes. Like, yeah. I, I don't count the multicolored ones, but you're right. There is war gray. This is the first monocolored level five, or just first level five ace that we don't have access to. And it's a busted one for almost any black deck because it's Mamemon on an ace effect with an inherited when attacking to <laughs> yeah. DDG Evolve 1. Not restricted to any archetype, just a straight DDG Evolve 1 when attacking. This card is so good. And I hate that we don't have this card more yeah. than any of the other cards. And then the last one, the scrambles. The reason the scrambles were so good, what they let you do is they're like a mix of a training boost and like the movie options from BT17, which we'll talk about. Uh, bit, it, yeah. lets, it lets you digivolve, reducing the cost by three. So you pay two for this card, lets you digivolve, reducing the cost by three. Then you place the card in your battle area. So you can go into your megas for two instead of three, essentially is what that boils down to. Then the delay effect is at the start of your turn. If your opponent has a Digimon, you can activate the delay. You return a colored Digimon, whatever color scramble from your trash to the top of your deck. Start of your turn. That's important. That happens before your draw. Start of turn and then your draw, right? So you put a card from your trash on top of your deck. Then if you don't have a Digimon in play, you play basically a rookie, a 2k or less rookie, but it just says a, a Digimon. So, you know, you can have like a, I don't know, I don't think we have any, but there could be a 2k or less level four. You play that to your field. That's really important because it rigs your deck. It rigs your deck with the draw that you need. You know, if you had that, if you only had one level four, you used it, boom, you can get it right back. You don't have to play the game of gotcha with your deck. More importantly, there are a lot of shenanigans that could happen with start of your turn effects. For example, there was a really stupid combo that I saw. I can't remember if it was like a Fenry deck or what it was, but basically. Oh, yeah, with. Um was it I called the uh, track it was. I think it was with was Dracmon. Dracmon? So, so basically what you can yeah, do yeah. is you um you play it out the effect that lets you evo from trash to uh, like a beast and if you have a tamer on board like a memory tamer you're allowed to go negative 
and then activate the tamer to gain your memory back and then you just continue going with your blaze that was uh, the pretty cool thing you could do with it so with a fenry stack like you could start at the drachmon digivolve into the level four activate the when digivolving of something to digivolve into something else from trash and give your opponent air quote you know for memory but then activate your memory tamer start of your yep. turn effect <laughs> and then you're you right back to less, three which is crazy yeah. To three. yeah so a lot of setup required to like do that obviously but it is something that can be abused nonetheless because of the way digimon is so yep. we don't have those cards ah i hate that but that is the world we live in. We're getting these cards in December in our limited card set, limited card pack volume, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, so look forward to that. We are basically four months away from it at this point. But let's pop over into our tier list. So the first deck we're going to talk about is Blue Flare, which is a deck that doesn't seem to fucking die. I pile oriented feels right. I have no issue yeah. with pile oriented. It's just like <laughs> we're we're going on a BT seventeen, and like I've seen this deck like pop up whether it's in TBL uh, or even in like regionals, like maybe not like a lot, obviously not a lot of regional tops, but even just like hearing and seeing the deck, it's just like you're still doing things. How? <laughs> it's just because like the way that the way the deck is like functions and stuff, right? You're playing a level five for three costs right yeah um your level your level three does not really matter it's not like you have to evo up a chain so what can you put in that spot you you got your gaussmon and now you can play ukomon so that just speeds up your plays even more just like you know what newmon does and so you're allowed to go you know swing two checks uh on suspend two checks again or whatever right and then just pop off um, you have a mega card in was it the Z Greymon that you can Evo for basically free or one, whatever it is. It's, I think it's and like one, suspend, yeah. And then on suspend, swing again. So you can do a lot of damage in like one turn with blue flare still. And if your opponent is not ready for it, like GG's, you know what I'm saying? So that, that's why I think it still can, you know, you still see it pop every once in a while. And I think yeah. it's uh, perfectly pilot oriented. Yeah. Not to mention <laughs> that deck has access to Bike Mon Ace. Yep. Now, and Zudo well, Ace as well. Zudo Ace, yeah, but not as big as Vikemon Ace because, you know, like you said, they're dropping their level 5 for 3. And then if they had the Gobble Bond, True. they would have had access to a level yeah. 7 Ace natively. So, pilot oriented. I mean, I probably wouldn't have changed it with Gobble Bond anyways, but this is just a deck that, like, somebody who says, I'm playing Blue Flare and I can top with Blue Flare is going to do exactly that. Yeah. And so along with that, I'm going to say Hunters is also pilot oriented. That's fine with me. I think I <laughs> think Hunters skeptical. I think it's uh less good than Blue Flare at the moment. Um so I definitely towards the bottom of pilot oriented. I could see it randomly getting a top here or there. Um we do just have more tamer hate at this point in the game. Um, but I I could see it like randomly like someone who's been playing fucking hunters from since release right like I could see them being like I'm gonna take this to an event and they somehow dodge every single bad matchup for it and get like the 16th spot in the tournament like yeah I could see that Dan thoughts Mm, I don't know. I think as of right now, until new support, I think is more casual. But he said a bottom end pilot orange, so I could probably be okay with that. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm. I am by no means saying that that deck is gonna like. You're, you know. The, yeah. the thing with it is, it's like it never got worse, but it's just everything got so much better. Yeah, so it's like also, you could, you could do things with it. But like at the same time, it doesn't matter just because of what today's game is like right now. Yeah. And it's level five is purple. And not that we don't have good purple aces, but it doesn't. It's not like in terms of like, do I want to play this level five rush? So to say hunter's deck or this level five rush uh, blue flare deck. Yeah, blue I mean, flare has the edge because of like Mon 
and well, all the other blue tools that it has access to. Also, that I can just play like Ukomon, right? Like hunters yes. can't play Ukomon. Absolutely, yeah, I think need, that's a big point. You need your your rookies for that deck. I think honestly, the the best point for hunters being pilot oriented would probably at the very end of pilot oriented would probably just being that sometimes Quartzmon will just win you a game. Fair. You would have to yeah. play the Quartzmon centric build. Like, and you I, would and have I think to that that's that, I think that that's really like. I mean, don't get me wrong. Hunters is still a capable deck, and it has very great removal. Things that hurt hunters, though, to keep in mind, uh, Arrested Jermon does not trigger Ace effects when it tucks. Um, Correct. So that, in my opinion, is what really hurts that deck the most. Yeah, that's big. That that fucking sucks. That's one of the big reasons I haven't been playing it. Uh, I, I was high on hunters format after format after format. But uh, yeah, the fact that it does not trigger Ace is like fucking soul-crushing. Um, I really think the best way to win with that deck now is just establishing, like, you know, you do your normal Arrested Jermon shit, you swing a bunch of times, and then you just establish courts and hopefully lock them out of the game. That's really good. Pretty much. It's a fair deck in today's day and age, and <laughs> Which yeah. is insane the game does think about. not like fair decks yeah. <laughs> currently. Yeah. So, in talking about Hunters, let's talk about a deck that uh, arose at the same time as Hunters, but did get new support. Shine Greymon. Oh, contenders. contenders. I, like, I like contenders there. I think I'll let Dan talk about it. This is more his deck. Uh, I think that new support is just so good for the deck. I know. I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on it for some reason. I don't know why. Because you're allowed to do things with your stack instead of just sit there and look pretty and hope that hope to God you got your Marcus is going off. At least now you don't have to worry about or losing your Marcus if you don't need to. Um, and I think the new option, especially, I think we could see two versions of shine pop off. So we're going to see obviously your normal shine with regular burst modes, but I think because of the new option card, we're going to see a stronger version of, uh, shine of room mode turbo because you're allowed to evo to room mode for free. So I could see, I could hundred percent see a more, a stronger version of that as well. Pop up. Um, I think the burst mode is super strong. Again, I think it's another card that people are sleeping on. Just being able to have that one card swing three checks is amazing. Uh, being able to burst, be able to ace play on your opponent's turn and play a tamer, possibly kill stuff because uh, like if you play like the Marcus or Steel Turn, the BT-13 Marcus, um, you could do a lot with it. So I could see, you know, being a contender. I don't know how well it did and I don't remember how well it did in JP. I think it like won every once in a while, maybe. Um, it probably sounds about I think right, it, but I it don't did know okay. Anything. I mean it was not like obviously the best deck in the format or anything. Um but I think it yeah. had a, enough wins. Yeah, top here and there and yeah. wins here and there, I think. Um yeah, so I think it's better than <laughs> what people give it credit for. And then the new Shine Greymon, just like you can't touch me either. So like you got a protection Shine Greymon, which is pretty good because Shine Greymon loses to anything almost in today's game. So that's not bad as well. Shine Greymon definitely got a few tops, quite a few tops. Yeah, it definitely. But, okay, I yeah. think I, it did well enough that I, would, yeah. I feel comfortable with contenders. It, the builds were definitely different, but you know when looking at. This is the type of deck that like I wouldn't look at a JP build for necessarily no. because best of one versus best of three format differences here. And I know some JP listeners are like, oh, our formats aren't that different. But, you know, the big thing is that if are you playing it to, you know, try to aggro the fuck out of your opponent and, and go for win? Or are you trying to establish a little bit more of that control game and play for the long game? Now, most yeah. of the results yep. on Digimon Meta are from Japan, so it's from a best of one. You only got two, one from Korea and one from Thailand, who are presumably, well, I don't even know how Korea is playing. I thought Korea had their own localization of the game and they were behind. No, no, that's China does. China does, but I'm pretty sure Korea has their own localization I think they're well. on the JP. Yeah, I thought the, because I thought the, in, correct me if I'm wrong, mm. I thought the India, Japan, Korea, I thought they all played JP format. They all do, but obviously China has its own. And then I want to say Korea has its own localization. I could be wrong on that, but I don't know. I'm not that sure. was my assumption. 
But regardless, and yeah. Also, like people, I don't think people touch uh, uh, Ruin tur- Turbo Ruin mode as well in <laughs> JP. <laughs> no, I feel like that was more of a us thing. Uh, EN players, yeah. With new option, I could see people running that way more frequently as well. So new option, what it does for the deck, <laughs> whenever one of your tamers is deleted or returned to hand, you get to go into a shine gray in your hand in its name. So with your new shine that you're getting, you basically have protection because when it would leave the battle area, you return one of your yellow tamers to prevent it from leaving. Which and is just mode, I don't know where. It's like gum. Yeah, literally. It's Ruin like mode off the top rope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's bulk case on your opponent's turn, basically. Yeah, I think that's going to be a strong deck. I agree with you about burst mode. I think that burst mode is really good. First of all, it's a really good generic card for yellow decks because it's not restricted it's to what tamer you play. Tamer, right. Believe, right? Yeah. It's just one. It's not even yellow. It's just one tamer without paying oh, okay. the cost. Obviously, you know, you have to play it in a yellow deck because it only has yellow digi evolution requirements. Correct. But it lets you play any tamer. And then when attacking for every, you suspend tame up to two of your tamers and then for every effect that or for every tamer it's suspended by that effect you gain sec plus one so like dan said you're effectively swinging sec plus two three checks on 15k probably more and a generic ace level seven boss monster is pretty damn good yeah i think i think i just think it gives you more versatility instead of like all right uh the play is you know go to marcus Let's say you Evo, uh, swing Marcus Evo into Shine Greymon, effect, uh, neg a bunch of stuff, then burst mode, bounce Marcus, play Marcus again, swing again. It gives you a little more versatility where you don't have to rely on the, the swings from the Marcus. You can do all different type of things and not have to worry about it as well. And, you know, depending on the situation of the game state, right? So, like, I, that, like that's what I like about the new support. Yeah. So in talking about that, let's talk about the deck that I think it would have like a fair matchup into as long as you're not getting absolutely and completely utterly bum fucking rushed. bum rushed is Numamon. Because I always felt like Shine should have a decent matchup into it. The problem is the way that Shine is currently played, it doesn't allow for that. And I do think the new support allows it to play better into Numamon. But obviously... Probably like... Like, I feel like probably Ruin mode control, like the Turbo Ruin control is probably a better because you can just keep negging and they play things. You just keep negging because, you know, it's a blanket effect. But at the same time, that version doesn't like give you the aggression you need to try to yep. finish off new, new one. So like you get in this weird situation where you just keep trying to control, but you're not winning the game. That's why like um, your games versus that you like took forever because they couldn't really kill you, but they now necessarily trying to uh win the game they're just killing your board and then they just stuck there doing nothing sometimes yep pretty much yeah so i do think we all agree new months best deck in format though yeah it's yeah. Top three. i yeah i wouldn't say best deck in the format i think it's best second format i'm with that we'll, best second format we'll get so. there I think it's uh, obviously it's still a very good deck and it's one of the meta defining decks because if you're not beating Numamon consistently times are tough out there for you buddy I hate to say it they don't get worse and they just get more shit that they can use because they too have access to not that they would but they too have access to the Shine Grey uh, Ace because of Plat if they play the Venus Mon obviously they have Valk if they decide to double up on that for whatever reason um, they are a yellow deck somewhat, uh, you know, on its top end. So whatever tools yellow gets access to, they have access to. So being sure. able to utilize some of this stuff that, you know, yellow just generically has just means that new one's in a good place, but they're just new one is new one going to be that premier aggro rush deck. Um, that also that has, you know, anything. those ele- <laughs> yeah, those elements of uh, control, you know, maybe not even I wouldn't call it control, maybe the more elements of mid range where it can take your board from something to nothing. <laughs> Don't 100%. put it past Nimumon to take whatever board you put on field and be like, yeah, bye bye. <laughs> like, for example, Diaboromon, which I guess we'll talk about next since I'm talking about it. 
That was so random. I wasn't expecting Dia Borma next. <laughs> I, was, I, no, I was I was gonna so Dia Borma, I feel like you know this would be a great deck into the format. Not that it's not, but then you consider that new one has Valk. And what does Valk do? Neg five. How big are your tokens? 3k. Ah shit. <laughs> oh, well, what if I play the Inframons that buff me? Uh, they're only doing a 2k, so you need two of those Inframons in a stack to buff your tokens above the 5k threshold. That's a tough ask, considering that you have new Inframons that are just so good. And you're probably not even playing those old Inframons. But Absolutely. you're out here as Diaboromon, just getting bodied by Valk I like, from New One <clears throat> alone. I like Diaboromon and Rogue slash Sleeper. I think it's either like bottom contender or like Rogue Sleeper pick. I'm not even trying to like be like, oh, Diaboromon fan or anything. But I just think with the new support, what it can do now, as I've played it in EX6 and now I know it was coming, you know, BT17 and stuff. I think the support is really, really good and like a um, competitive version. I'm going to play it just to play it for the shits and giggles, just to see if I can pull it off the all win con. But like, you don't even really like uh, your best version of it. You're not going to be running four of it. Agreed. You'll be running probably two of it realistically, the uh, clock, the clock hard, just to give it that protection when you need it. And then you just pop off when you pop off. Um, I think it's going to be able to just steal games when you can get there. If you set up your both Diabora plays, you know, with the Ace and the EX6 one, you can, you know, kind of like lock, do like a play lock, you know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm talking about, Varney, when it comes to yes. it, because it's Ace. One Ace D says, digivolves when, and the other one pops. Well, yeah, no, they D digivolve because of the inheritables. Now hmm. you have eight inheritables of D digivolve. So now you have that consistent way of digivolving one. You have the ace that says when a when a Digimon is played by an effect, you can pop something equal to the amount of Diaporamons plus whatever. Um, then you have EX6 that has when a Digimon is played, period. So now just by effect, you get to play a token. And then the chain reaction happens, right? Yeah. Um, so now with the eight Inframon has the, the same inheritables, you have that consistent Digivolve now, which is re really, really good. Um, plus the popping consistency, obviously, with Diabora Ace. Uh, you have a lot of ways to do things now. Plus the new, uh, what's it called? The new uh, Karamon mm. lets you warp into uh, Inframon in your opponent's turn. Um, if you have combo, if you already have like, uh, what's it called? Like a token on board, you can just pop off into a deal board on your opponent's turn, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> uh, so you can do a I lot of shenanigans. Now, now I do, Facts. you do have some great points, Dan. However, I like the Abormon and Rogue Sleeper because I feel like it's flavorful and <laughs> I, that's why that's I why I said like I think it's, it's like bottom flavor, it's, it's bottom contenders, but like you know, top of Rogue Sleeper pick in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's good. I, I think it's something it. else to acknowledge is uh, the new Omnimon deck in the format completely just <laughs> fucking destroys oh, the Abormon. That's the whole that's the whole point of Omnimon, obviously. <laughs> yeah. You if you but if she, you see your you, opponent flip that egg. Just call it GG, okay? <laughs> but shit, if you're able to get to the Inframon <laughs> plays ASAP before they can like set up, then you know you can always just keep you know regressing them and not let them have the plays because the uh, what's it called the the bo the boost the option doesn't stop Digivolve, so I'm pretty sure, right? Like it doesn't no. like proc off of Digivolve because nothing really procs off of Digivolve nowadays. I don't think so. So no, like, it doesn't. if you have that consistent way of always having. The DJ off going, I think you're okay, but like again, how fast can you set up versus someone that can just go Agu, hard play a you know, a war gray, whatever, go to metal gray, just DNA right there, you know? Yep, exactly. And every time that happens, your board is gone. Don't make no yeah, doubts yeah. about it. If that play happens, just start bottom decking everything. All right. <laughs> like yeah. you don't have a board left. <laughs> Them tokens, they ain't going to be around for, for long, buddy. <laughs> now, a, a big thing why I would leave Diaboromon and Rogue Sleeper is because that deck heavily utilized both Cyber Dramon Ace as well as Black Scramble. Yeah. 100%. Not having, not being able to free play your erratas is still a big weakness. And then. You know, obviously the resiliency of Black Scramble. Well, you have the Kurosari for the one-time drop, but right. like the consistency so, after playing it with the Cyber. That deck also just really needs a new tamer too. I think it get, if yes. it gets a new tamer sometime in the future here, like that's really one hundred percent. No, like, one thousand percent. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, so, what do we got I, next? Diaboromon, 
Well, we talked about Omni. So where does Omni yeah. oh. go into the format? I want to say that's a contending deck because I think any deck that's game plan is predicated on let me turbo into like my boss monster, which in this case is Omni. Not that War Gray and Melga can't, you know, kind of hold it down until Omni comes out. Also considering that, you know, Omni is an ace card. So even if you just have War Gray chilling there on the field and your opponent makes the mistake of forgetting that you're playing the fucking Omni ace deck, that you can just be like, ha ha ha, Omni ace, bitch, bottom deck it. Or what is it? It's yeah. delete and then bottom delete. deck, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you also, again, you have that um, option card as, you know, a trap card too. It's like, oh, you're going to pop yes. my War Gray? Sorry, buddy. Omni Ace. It's, you know? it's not even pop. It's literally when it would leave the battle area other Correct. than in battle. So yeah. like you said, like it doesn't proc on the Digivolve. But like, oh, you try to bounce Chaos Egg, DP Reduce. DP Reduce is a big one because it's yeah. leaving the battle area other than in battle. Which means when the Omnimon comes out, if you don't have, like, if you're over that threshold, it doesn't you're matter. Alive. Yep. Because we learned that, like, that it's. But also, wait, hold on. I just remember. So that just reminded me of ruling question now. Because yeah. DNA is a new Digimon, does that neg still carry over anyway? Actually, yeah, you're right. It doesn't, it doesn't right? even carry over. Right. So you're perfectly fine. You're like, all right, cool. <laughs> yes, you neg me. Stupider. Great. I'm about to come back out with 15K anyway. So you go try again, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Numamon. Literally, all I think of is like Numamon in this instance, because you're like, cool. All right. So I'm going to bottom deck. Oh, no, it's bottom deck and then delete. So you don't even have to proc there on the leash. You can just say, take that sure. stack. Just <laughs> take that bottom deck it. And then I'm going to pop like whatever other stragglers left on the field. And now I've got this 15K Omni that has inheritables from my War Gray and my... um. And my Melga, I'm trashing your security while I'm swinging for a check. And then I'm sure Melga's probably like gaining a memory or some shit. No, it's yeah, an unsuspend. I don't know what it is. It's a yeah. fucking unsuspend. So you get to swing, trash, check one, and then unsuspend and swing again. Like, come on, bro. That's so tough. Solid combo right there. Solid combo. Yeah, I think that deck is... I don't know where in contenders we'll figure that out. Like, the I, more we put stuff in. I but. also like that there's like very weird iterations of that deck, too. Which... So I'm, I'm excited to see what people end up doing with it. Um, hopefully, yeah, okay. hopefully people get creative with it this format, but I guess we'll see what happens. I feel like English meta, they, they're just going to, you know, throw it up there. Because I feel like English meta, they're going to see Ancient Guru Ramon and just be like, this is what we're playing. We have, I don't care about anything else. It's Numamon or Ancient Guru Ramon. You're putting Ancient in front of Numa. Interesting. So he... It, it, my my logic, right? I'll listen. Here's the logic. Yeah. Numamon does well into everything, right? I don't think Numamon has... A, what would you say is Numamon's worst matchup? I don't Numemon. think it really had... It's the mirror. Probably right? Numamon. And, just, and that's just because it's the mirror. Ancient Guru is... Mir like So Mirage, I think Mirage was a great deck. Uh, but anybody who wasn't like a, a blue player, like a true blue player, they weren't playing Mirage. I think Mirage does well because Mirage can just bounce them one stuff away. But the problem is Mirage decks nowadays, obviously they only focus on the OTK. They don't care about like the control aspect that Mirage can provide. So their entire game plan is literally just build OTK, go for OTK. Ancient Guru Ramon has all the tools it needs as a blue deck and as a hybrid deck to kind of just get around the shenanigans that Numamon is capable of doing. Because uh, I have to like look up what the hybrid, um, what the new hybrid DP thresholds are. But if you're doing a Valk Ace, which is the Neg Five, there are six K hybrids. If you're doing um, a Ruin mode, it's again still six. So you're getting above that one K threshold. Your stuff is capable of warping into Ancient. Ancient's capable. Of, the Ancient bounces lowest level, and then when it bounces, or no, sorry, let me rephrase. When it adds that card to your opponent's hand or your hand, for what it's worth. You get to bounce security, so you don't even have to check security. This has no end of turn, you know, delete unless you're playing the old Lobomon. It has Digicross. Like, it's a lot more resilient to what Numamon is capable of doing. And it's a blue deck. And because it's blue yellow, it also has access to heavens for those situations where, for whatever reason, bounce isn't enough. Uh, I think this deck is the best deck over Numamon. Not by like this large landslide. But I think it has the edge in that matchup. 
I'll, I'll mm. just say this until proven otherwise. Newmont still king just because it's still king at I, the moment. I personally think Newmont's still just a better deck, um, uh, mainly because I I think that it is better into every deck still. Like I understand that yeah. Ancient ignores things and is going to do stupid shenanigans. I just think that Nume has a better matchup into every single deck. Like. Just even being able to do any all the combos that Numi is capable is is what I would like my reasoning for it. You know, any of the shenanigans you have been able to do in any of the earlier formats, you still get to do now. I'd agree. I'd agree with that. Uh, so, what would Ancient have a bad matchup into? Is the question. Uh, oh, I don't know. Yeah, just because I, I haven't. Don't, yeah, I haven't done any play deck myself. Like, they're, yeah. they're a blue deck. They have access to being unblockable, so that Magna X <laughs> doesn't matter. You just say you look at it and you're like, all right, cool, buddy. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I, I, just, I just think it's probably one of those things um, where it's just like who goes fast or call it a day type of thing. Like if you're able to go fast at that moment, you're yeah. the better deck and, at that and, moment. And don't get me wrong. Vice I, don't, versa. I don't think that uh, I don't, I'm not saying that Ancient is like this drastically worse deck either. Like, I'm with you no, totally, yeah. Barney. I think it's probably going to be very close margins. Right, it's and very I, close. And I also think it's going to depend on how many people end up playing Ancient versus how many people end up playing <laughs> Nume. I know. Now we're going to see how yeah. many of those new mod <laughs> fucks hop off the deck and, like, let me play the new best I deck. Wouldn't be I've already, I wouldn't be surprised. I've already, I've already heard happens. people talking about, oh, I can't wait to play Ancient instead of Nume. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, yep. y'all already so, know. Y'all yeah. already know. But, uh, and because I, I said it, really it, Magna X. Where does our boy? Where does our big bad tower? I'm specifically talking about Magnamon blue armors. Arm. Yeah, blue armors. Blue armors. Uh, defining. You think so? I mean, I guess so. I guess. Yeah, still, I guess like the, the results say so. It's the, it's the big three. Yeah. I mean, you but, can throw in yellow vaccine. You can throw in yellow vaccine armors up there too. With it, just because it's. It's uh yeah, I guess I guess tomato, I have to tomato. agree with you on that. I but I tomato, feel tomato. I do feel like I do yeah. feel like it's a step below ancient and Numamon to be I honest. I think Imperial is better than Magna. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh I I really do like I would probably say Magnus is top a uh, good good nah. contender deck. I don't know if it's meta defining stuff. I don't know if you got no matter no ma no matter what when you, when it comes to the current game until ban list happened. You had to go think about this regardless. Can I get, can, can I have, do I have it out to Magna X? Yes or no? That's always going to be a thing. Magna X is still going to be a top 16 deck no matter what, whether it's winning or not, or not. <laughs> it's still yeah. going to be a deck that you're going to see in top 16 regionals consistently. Uh, just with, same with Numa and, you know, Ancient Guru, obviously. And since we already talked about it, Imperial is going to be up there as well because Imperial got two busted cards. Insane two cards. We can talk about that in a second. I think, um, I don't know the statistics. This and is, then this also, is me going for, off. especially, so I guess you could say Yellow Vaccine Armors is going to be the worst version because That's what I was gonna we, do say. Get the, I, we do get the Flame Dramon, the promo Flame Dramon that uh, raids and then you add a security back or whatever it is. I uh, you bounce security about that. Trash. I, I would actually like security. That. I actually feel comfortable putting yellow vaccine in contenders, like top of contender, top. And I feel com and I feel better with Magna X right there. Do does anyone disagree? No, I, that uh, flame Dramon point. That flame Dramon point is a really, really good point because that, that card, card becomes is really I won't say, good. I won't say best card of the deck, but it becomes a top two, top three card it's for that such deck. A, and so only. audience, what this card is, it's a promo that we're getting as a box topper for 17. It has armor purge, obviously, because it's an armor form, but it also has raid, which is the really big thing here. And it says when this Digimon's attack target is switched, your opponent adds the top card of their security stack to the hand. That right. means you don't even have to wait for the ace play. That means if you swing the flame Dramon and you raid into something, you can just proc the Magna X immunity right off of that bounce, which is just stupid. Like, holy shit, is that crazy? So, yeah, yeah. I'm with you, Mike. 
even without like let's say even if you don't have like a two stack going on it's just the one stack instead of the flame draw all right cool bounce secure to kill something that might be small because you're gonna be probably ak ish because i think he's normally six six seven i mean five or six he's normally five and you should so be you playing the 16 v mon for the 2k and boost yep. maybe a boost from 1k the from egg. your egg yep so you might be what ak i said right or nine whatever it is you would be you would be 8k Okay, AK. And then just go into the Magna X after that, right? You just use the um the option, uh, go into yep, it. Use the option, yeah. And then you're set up right there as well to just chilling. Yeah. Like and it's, you're doing damage because sometimes Magna sometimes is a little slow. So you're not like a Magna outside the starter deck Magna, right? You go to the other Magnas, you just kind of sit there and you just sometimes you'll swing, sometimes you don't because you're scared something might happen. But at least you're raid, you're getting rid of something most likely. Um, and then you, you also bounce get a on security. Free security so like, check. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think it gives you that extra aggression that you need that the deck needs as well. Something to note as well: um, Magna X also does get access to uh, powder mode. <laughs> so <laughs> that, is, I mean, yeah. that is something to note. I don't know so how dope. many people <laughs> will end up using it, but I have seen I'm some. I'm going lists. to play I, two of those. I have seen fucks. some lists doing <laughs> you it. Already so know. With one know. room, Varney, you out here I with double know. decks. I just don't GX, know. And now you're gonna try to fit two powder modes. Get out of here. I'm gonna obviously I'm gonna drop just GX, and I'll probably just drop decks down to one because paladin mode is so disgusting. What do you Art need decks for? Which um, is a great segue to talk about why Imperial, I think, is maybe the third best deck in the format. Definitely meta defining. Um, even though Paladin mode, the deck be does not than ancient, really. But... It's kind of crazy. The deck does not really change all that much from B sixteen. <laughs> no, it does not. It, it, it adds. It adds. I mean, literally, quite literally, the most common ratio of these cards is it adds one to two Paladin mode. And it adds two to three of the movie promo. Uh, not movie promo, the movie card. That's it. That is that is the only changes to the deck. Is it adds those two cards to it. And that deck gets crazy. The movie card, I'll let Varney read it um, after, and he can read Paladin mode as well. But the movie card essentially just gives you... Um, protection. Uh, free protection. I think it plays a tamer from security... Or something like that. It also just um, uh, lets you digivolve. Is it a free digi evolution. Yeah, Air free digi evolution. It's it's so crazy. A paladin mode is also just bonkers. I'll just let Varney read the cards. Yeah. All crazy right. Card. So, return to the ancestors. That's the movie card. One of your Digimon main effect when you play for the two cost. One of your Digimon can digivolve into a level five or higher with free. So, if you don't have a DNA play for whatever reason, you can just use this to straight digivolve for two and it doesn't feel as bad because you're not digivolving for four because you're reducing that cost by four. And then you place a card in battle area. And then the delay effect is alternates when one of your Digimon with the free trait would be deleted other than by one of your effects. So, you know, partition is a big thing here because obviously, part, you know, you have partition, but. You also now have protection by Return to the Ancestors. You delay this card by digivolving into an Imperial Dramon in its name from your hand without paying the cost. You prevent the deletion. So you're sitting at Paiyo Dramon and your opponent's like, I don't know, uh, Atomic Blaster or some shit. Oh, cool. Proc uh, movie option. Digivolve into any of Dragon or Fighter mode. Bottom deck their shit. They're sitting at Dragon or Fighter mode and they're like, Gaia Force. You're just like, <laughs> Paladin SM mode or PM. Yep. Yeah, you could mode shift from dragon mode to fighter mode. Bottom that like it's so crazy. And then paladin mode. Well, <laughs> paladin mode is cracks. paladin mode is the ultimate finisher for Imperial, and I just love that we got such a fucking good one. Like right? this card Finally, is so yep. fucking goaded, and the Digimon itself is so fucking goaded. I'm hyped. So this digivolves from blue or green. But it's also a white card. So it's a white, blue, green card. It's a tricolor card. <sighs> it's a ace, obviously. <laughs> Which is another thing to consider that it's an ace card. On play, add when digivolving. You trash all Digi Evolution cards of your opponent's Digimon. All of their Digimon. A new one on board. You say bye bye to all of those sources, right? And then you return all cards from either your deck or, or from your opponent's trash or your trash to the bottom of the deck. If it just so happens to return a white level seven, 
you gain three memory, which is a lore reference to Omnimon, I'm sure. 100%. And then when attacking, <laughs> by return... <laughs> What the fuck is this one attacking by returning one of your opponent's Digimon with no cards to the bottom of the deck on suspended Digimon? That's a fucking Fenry effect right there. It's also not <laughs> by deleted one, one of your either. opponent's Digimon. Yeah, it's, all, yeah, it's also not once per turn. <laughs> like you better, you better yeah. pray <laughs> you're heading into a, uh, a <laughs> option bomb when when that comes out. Like Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah. I love this card so much because like Mike said, it's the ultimate finisher and it's not like we're talking about it and we're saying like it's busted, but we don't really mean like, oh, it's busted. It needs to be banned. It's just nice to finally see like we've had great finisher cards for sure. But here is a true level seven that when this shit hits the field for its archetypal deck. Even more so than burst mode, uh, shine gray burst mode, in my opinion, obviously, you know, there's Mirage's burst mode because they're going for the OTK. But what this does, this literally just says, all right, uh, game? <laughs> ah, no? It's okay. <laughs> like, yeah, that card, is, that card is fucking sweet, honestly. It's crazy. It's a crazy card for sure. Yeah, also, I would, I that personally DP think this is. is mm, perfect. Love 16K that. is beautiful. Yes, I sir. personally think this deck, like we said, Numemon and Ancient Guru are like this. So, like, I'd like to think of them in a triangle, but I think Imperial has a really good matchup into both Numan and uh, Ancient. I think the problem is just speed. Uh, I think so there's too. No, f there's no free tamer play, and I say that in air quotes because obviously the movie option plays the card. But Imperial definitely needs a Davis and Ken setup. You need that one BT16 setup, otherwise you're just so much slower. But once you do. Shit pops off. The off. Races. Yeah, I mean You're it's also off to the races. It's also still gonna suffer from normal imperial problems until December when we get the fucking sweet blue green memory boost. But yeah, you, right now the deck is kind of it can be a little annoying and inconsistent at times. I play literally like every fucking searcher that deck possibly allows me to play, <laughs> and it'd still be like, where the fuck are the <laughs> where's the other color card I need? God damn it! Yeah, hello. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, I think it's um we're to the point where like, I think this is like the big four. Like these are the four main decks of the format. Whether you know the wind share it says like it's gonna be Nuba Ancient Groove versus everybody else is possible, but those two decks are still the other two decks are still very, very um strong decks to the point where it's like you're gonna see those two can win any day, any week, any month. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm with you for sure, Dan. See, Mike, Imperial definitely is meta defining this time. It was meta defining last time. It's just <laughs> you, you had another replacement, Mike, who just plays blue decks there, and he wasn't there to defend. He didn't defend Imperial properly. Yeah, stop putting a replacement, Mike. So <laughs> it was just us two for the last one. No, Gino was, was Gino. there. Oh, was he? Yeah, okay. I forgot. So we kind of glossed over it. I know we didn't, like we talked about a little bit, but let's just elaborate a touch. Vaccine armor. Um, contenders, because like they also get, you know, obviously access to the Shine Gray, uh, the Burst Mode Ace, which is really good, but they're already playing Rune Mode and Dex most likely. So their space is like little to none, and they're not able to utilize some of the tools that obviously Blue Base Magna X is getting access to. It's still going to be a good deck. People are still going to play it. We have our yellow purist. We have our control purist out there. And if there's a deck that they want to play to control, that's the deck that they're going to play for sure. Um, but I, I'd agree. I agree with Mike. I think the split of blue base meta defining bottom of it and then vaccine in top of contenders. I could agree with that. Yeah, I mean, Really, I just feel like yellow vaccine kind of hard loses to some of the decks in meta defining too. Like, I feel like it hard loses to Imperial. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, think so? unless yes. they, if they get the early Magna X and can keep rocking it, and the Imperial player they're playing against isn't playing the DP boost, then yeah. Kind of, well, even now, uh, don't even no, think not it, even. It doesn't matter because, because uh, the movie Paolo option. Goes 16K now. So. Yeah, not even just that movie option. So when they're like, all right, cool, like heavens, you're just like, okay. Yeah. Movie option. <laughs> yeah. Right. 
Like, that, that I think well. it's a lot more resilient nowadays. Unless so, they, like, heavens that. you and put, like, all 20-something K on your fucking stack, then it doesn't matter, but... Hey, if it means you can get rid of a Magna X that maybe they didn't proc or whatever, you know? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, definitely a really tough matchup for Imperial, because if they... If they do any play besides Magna X, then Peel just strips its entire sources, and then Rapid X is completely fucking useless. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, no, oh, your worst, your worst nightmare is the Ruin mode. Yeah, and as we said, Ancient because... Guru just is unblocked and does not care that you have a fucking who does not care. Yeah. So, so there's that Jasmon, our lovely Royal Knight that never I seems genuinely... to die. Oh fucking feel like this deck is a casual deck but someone topped the last format so i feel like you have to put it in pilot oriented somehow all right so here's my argument for top of pilot oriented potentially bottom of like rogue sleeper okay over magna x well sure that's a non-factor ganku x balance protection dp reduction protection that's like the biggest thing because it means that uh, but Genko X gives that blanket none. I think it's like none of your Digimon or at least none of your sister mons uh, can be. And obviously Genko X, whatever the stack is, can be DP reduced or bounce the hand or deck. So what's number one doing? DP reducing. What's Ancient Guru doing? Bouncing. Paladin. Mo- I, the biggest worry is Imperial because they're just going to. <laughs> yank all that source away, stun the entire board, and say, hold this dick. <laughs> that would be the biggest worry for is the Imperial matchup. I'm not saying it has a good matchup into Numamon and Ancient. I'm saying it could have a decent matchup if things turn right. I pilot oriented. I'm pilot oriented, yeah. I just don't feel like I feel like you made very valid points, but honestly, I really don't feel like anyone is going to play Genku X anyways if they're playing Jessmon because they're they're just like, I want to play Jessmon, I don't want to play Genku. Yeah, they just want to punch security. And you still honestly, gotta, like, dude, I you still got to run the one Genku X into the deck, though. Cause you nah, some people combo. don't. Nah, they just say, fuck that. I just go yeah. Jessmon, Jessmon X, and Jessmon GX, and I just say, hold yeah. this dick as I wreck four security on, you know, one stack. Like, that's the way they play the deck. I think if you try to play the deck a little bit more control, it might work. Or a little bit more mid range. The problem is, I don't think it's that resilient. It weirdly actually has a not so terrible matchup. I mean, it does have a bad matchup in Dimpeel, but also not super terrible because from Master Disciple doesn't trigger Dragon Mode, actually. Oh, right, because it only reduces your next DJ Yeah, it doesn't. Yep. So it Mm. it kind of skirts. Dragon no, no, no. it actually no. It's a bad matchup because once Imperial sees Paladin mode. Oh no! I mean, it's a bad yeah. matchup anyways because Imperial is trash is donezo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Imperial is just going to stun the entire fucking board, and if you use any of the other abilities of the Sister Mons to Digivolve, then it's going to trigger Dragon mode. So yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I think top of Pilot oriented. I would not. Let me put it this way: I wouldn't be surprised if we see some sort of Jessmon build top next format. I. It would anger me, but sh- yeah. <laughs> I just feel like that deck is not a good deck, but honestly, kudos to someone for keeping that thing alive. I'm actually still mind blown that the deck that topped to the top, that shit looked like straight up. They just grabbed two <laughs> starter decks and were like, fuck it, here we go. 100%. So, like, 1000%. That was crazy. <laughs> but like, honestly, more power to them. So if they can do that again, this format, fucking whatever. I got nothing no, to say about it. We want to talk about somebody who tops with decks. Yeah. Luigi. Is there is there any is no. there any contention? Like Alpha I know it doesn't Mon, get yes, a sir. lot of tops. I know it like nobody else does it. But just on the sheer fact that like you could shit talk all you want about Alphamon, and then all of a sudden Alphamon off the top rope with Leechy as the as the the side coach, the side referee doing the count out, and all of a sudden you know second place at a regionals like I. Yeah, yeah and he's been doing that consistently Le- for years, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Legi- legitimately, it's legit just leechy with that deck because it is absolutely no one else in this goddamn world that can do what he does with that deck. Somehow, I don't know what it is, but that man 
knows how to play that deck inside out and like knows the matchups perfectly. It's just crazy how much he, he does. That's why that car, that deck will forever be poly oriented just because of that man. And right at the top, because there's one man who cemented its spot. Yeah, <laughs> that's a fact. A hundred percent. Like, if you're watching this, you're like, oh my goodness, Alphamont's pilot oriented. I'm sure you could, you can try to do Find something this clip, with it. But listen just to know, it. Make sure you understand why we say saying this. It's king. <laughs> Shout All out right. to that man. That man's a goat. We got all force. What we, how we feel about all force, Dan? I... I actually Rogue like Old Force pick? and Rogue Sleeper. Yeah, I'm like, damn. Casual? Are you crazy? I don't know. I'm, I, I don't play with that. Look, I feel work. like even I if, even know, if Old Force is version, the- I don't know like if uh, like Cliff is going to bring that to a regional. Shout out to Cliff. Yo. But that DNA version of the Old Force as top <laughs> that, end is no. kind of cracked. His name is that Old Force guy. Yeah, that True. Old Force guy. True. So... <laughs> If that thing pops off and that it's like a legit thing that works, works, boy, that's going to be tough right there. Because that's, you know, the problem with, you know, O-Force, right? Your bottom it sucks a lot of times, right? Mm-hmm. If you have that Pyildra to add more pressure and then you go into you swing, swing, have everything suspended. You go mm-hmm. O-Force, play Rena, unsuspend, and you just pop the F off now, bro. With partition. What? Right. So I don't like again. I don't know how legitimate that thing is when it comes to him, and if that's only like a his thing, and he's cooking up for locals or something. But if that becomes like a regional thing, because we saw this past format, it was like two, three, you all four tops, I think it was. There were there yeah. were a couple tops. Yep. Um, obviously, you didn't have the the DNA version of it, but if that DNA thing pops off, and people are really ch- trying it and stuff, and it works. I don't know. I think that could like be crazy. Again. It's all force though, so you need to find all them goddamn arenas. You gotta find all the tamers to you know pop off and all force is super hey. fragile. But at least you have partition now, right? And you just do it hey. over again. <laughs> For what it's worth, we get the new Vidramon promo, which is both an uh, yeah. on play and yeah. a when digivolving that to search arena. top three and adds yeah. a Vidramon and a tamer. I would also like to say, <laughs> even if all force was the worst deck in the fucking world. I feel like you can never put that in casual because the goddamn arena's got so much money. Yeah, right. I, I would feel wrong misleading any actual casual player down that path. Right. They'd be like, oh, old forces in casual? I'd love to play that with my friends. I feel like we have very specific old force, like people who are like lovers of old force, and they're always trying to like make it viable in a format. That's why we see it top, like every format. Yeah, I think it's also a good deck. It's just that, yep, Mirage right there. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think it's there a good deck. Go, it's just okay. that Mirage is like, ob- like has been the better pick the last few formats. Like, why would I play? Yeah, yeah. Why would I try and sit up with Old Force when I can turn my brain off and just go burr with Mirage? Yeah, pretty much. That's I think literally all Mirage is. Mm, Mirage makes sense there, and I actually don't. You can put it in front of Omnimon, I think, actually. Whatever you want to do, I, it's still honestly, pretended. I don't know if it's going to yeah, make that much of a difference. But. I don't know if it matters either. I, you can even probably put it in front of Shine. I don't know if it matters either, though. But uh, I think that Mirage, it's not getting, it's not like just, it's gotten worse. It's just going to keep doing what it does. It's going to open the kitchen. It's just Mirage doing Mirage, yeah. I just and think if you that, want to be really crazy, you can add Ancient Guru into it, like yeah. Barney swears that people are going to do. I don't know if people are really going to do it, but... No, no, it's not it. that... No, no, it's not that they're going to add Ancient Guru to Mirage. It's the other way around, that they're going to add Mirage to Ancient Guru. I feel like that's a very important distinction to make, because it's easier to add Mirage to Ancient Guru than it is the other sure. way around. Now, if you decide to play some sort of like blue hybrid base, I mean, sure, you can, right? Um, it's I've not seen deck lists where thing. people do it either way, honestly. My thing I, I with mean, Mirage, it works. I, my thing with Mirage, I don't even think that it's like I, like I said, it's going to do what the fuck it does. It's just, I think that people that have been playing Mirage might just end up playing Enchant instead. At this point. Yep, exactly. Right. Yeah, like that's the yep. only that's the only reason why it might not see. I mean, even this last format, it got quite a few tops. Like, maybe more than a handful, I think. So yeah, it's had, it, had, it had wins too in this format. Yeah, I think probably. it had two. I think it had two wins actually. I believe so. Yeah, two or three, something like that. But 
I think the only reason that it falls off even at all is just because people will switch to ancient. That's it. Yep, I'd agree. Because all mirages, like I said earlier, all mirages is a ignorant OTK deck. It's not being played as like a, a control, like hand control deck or anything along those lines. No, 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 no. They're playing this shit to OTK the living fuck out of you. <laughs> That's all they care about. I would honestly love at some point Mirage turns into some weird hand fucking like mill your opponent out by making them draw their entire deck. That would be so fucking cool. Hey, we have purple blue cards. They may not synergize, but we have purple blue <laughs> cards. One day, I, I would like to see some better alternate win cons in Digimon. At some point. Hey, just play Diaboramon. Get yeah, your four well, cards well, That board. comes to mind as like a really cool alternate win comp. But you know what I mean? Like, I'd like to see different strategies. The Who first knows? person <laughs> to win a fucking regional by Clock of the End is going to get so much fucking praise from me. Like... That's just gonna be man like, becomes a especially if they do it like in the finals. Like I think that's what matters the most. Like in the finals match, if you win shit. by clock of the fucking end, I would go berserk, bro. Yeah, I don't think it's ever gonna happen, but that'd be sick. I don't think so either, <laughs> but it would be fucking awesome. It's like, oh what time is it? <laughs> It's time, bitch. That's like, um, uh, the, the, I don't know. There's like, uh, there was like some weird Exodia decks running around for a little bit, a few months, <laughs> maybe a year or so. Um, and you, oh, you yeah. saw the one guy that, uh, um, at the, uh, yeah, the YCS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He it was, was a weird deck. It was just, it was his like brew that he cooked up. That's what I mean. Yeah, it was like his weird brew. Yeah. He was an older guy too. I think he actually just started yeah, playing. Yeah, he was. He started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! because his son was into it, so he wanted to like spend more time with his son or <laughs> something like cool. that. But he was yeah, playing Zodia, and it was like, literally, I don't even think he did super well, but like anytime he Run. pulled it off, everyone lost their fucking minds. <laughs> he did it on stream. He yes, went, I think yo, he, so his, oh, his record was like 7-2 and two in total, or 6-3, and three, something like that. Yep. He, it wasn't like that bad. Uh, he, I don't think he made like day two, though, but like his record wasn't like too too bad. And he, the one he did on stream, bro, all you heard was a crowd around the stage going crazy because no matter what, Exodia is nostalgia as AF and Yu-Gi-Oh players are nostalgic as AF, especially older yep, players. Yep. So like seeing someone do that in a, you know, in a highly competitive setting against today's decks, Exodia, bro, that was like the most, mind you, it was the most complicated shit ever he had to pull off. Of course, like, yeah. He had to pull off the most extra like today's type of combo with the links and stuff and just draw, draw, draw and get into where he needed to get into. But the fact that he did it, it was the most goaded moment ever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was crazy. That's going to be that moment for Dia Boromon when they yeah. put all four clock of the end on the yeah, field. Right. Even sweeter if it's against the fucking Omnimon deck. It'll never happen. That would be wild. <laughs> never happen, but it would be so fucking cool. <laughs> but it would be so awesome. Yeah, you need to start with all four in hand and then just like yeah, have the rookie dude, and then right. just have God draws. <laughs> just God draw it. <laughs> you got to mulligan and get at least two or three in hand and hope that one <laughs> isn't in security. <laughs> all right, Royal Knights. Uh... I'm cool with like pod oriented or bottom of rogue. I'm no, cool. Pilot oriented. I I'm think cool pilot either oriented. One. Okay. Because oriented. so you're getting access to a new Gallopmon. A new Gallopmon. Yeah. yeah. I think more important <laughs> is that you get access to Omni Ace, and yes. that you're not triggering Overflow when Yggdrasil Correct. absorbs the Omni Ace. So Omni Ace just being able to have raid and blocker, which is really important for when you play it out off of purge. Raid is bonkers for playing it off of purge, but also just being able to on play bottom deck and delete. Oh, sorry, no, it doesn't bottom deck on the DNA or on the on play because it's not DNA. But still being able to delete something is important. It's another name for your BT13 Omni to play right. out. Because it just doesn't let you play out the same name or I think it's same card number. No, same name, same name. Uh, but that the Gallopmon is mid. Um, that's it. The Gallopmon for the deck is mid. But 
Omni yeah, Ace is a oriented. cool little cool little toy that it gets. Uh, I'd say yeah, pilot oriented. Is it better than Seven Great Demon Lords? And I'd say absolutely not. I would say contenders. Yeah, I I could be overshooting this, but I think because Seven Great Demon Lords does what Royal Knights is trying to do, but with a air quote. It just okay. It's not a better win con. It's just that it's more resilient. With Royal Knights, if you're popping their shit, th there's nothing for Yggdrasil to absorb. Therefore, there's nothing for your deck to do. With Demon Lords, whenever a motherfucker leaves the battlefield, that motherfucker is absorbing another motherfucker under the gate. So when one leaves, two get under the gate. Yeah. It's also just got more like tools. To deal with the meta so yeah i would say not only is it a better deck than royal knights i'd say it's potentially top of contenders but like i said i could be wrong i you know it's a tough one because like even in this format where ex6 as the mains obviously came out not ex yeah ex6 ex yeah ex6 ex6 yeah. it, it was barely topping still like you saw tops here and there, mm. uh, like you saw Maybe like in the one more or two recent tournaments. I think that's had more tops. Well, you never, it was never a top eight deck. Really? Okay. Yeah. So like, I don't know. That's tough for me to say top of contenders. While we getting all these other better decks as well. You know what I'm saying? I'm uh, be honest. Maybe somewhere in the middle. I don't know. I'm gonna be honest. I'm pretty even bottom of contenders. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, let's let's, still let's address that. Let's address it like towards the end, because I, like I said, like I could have been overshooting it, and like like you said, like you're right. Um, I think about like its matchup into like just Omni alone, being able to remove cool. two bodies at once. You gonna, you gonna give me five off the rip? Great, mm. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? I'm gonna just see, play, set up and my have, stuff and then and you have protection off. by way of movie right. options. So like, yeah, I don't I, know. I, all right, well let's leave it's it tough. there for now. Know. I'm not like fully 100% sure just because it's weird. I feel like the deck didn't perform as well here as it, as it did in JP in their EX6 format, but I could be wrong. We could be. We'll see where it goes. Since we talked about Gallimon, uh, good old, um, good old, old sleeper, Gallimon. I guess because of the new stuff. I don't know. Pilot oriented, Pilot -oriented. casual. I don't, I, honestly, because it's so weird because it doesn't have the McGeejamon ace. So uh, I don't know. All right. So is it better than Blue Flare? No. No. Is it you better think than even with the new support with like the Crimson? Crimson Vote Ace is cracked. I know it's cracked, no. but I just think that the, no. the deck is still too fair, is its fucking issue. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I agree. All right, no, wait. We want to talk about being fair. Why is this deck fair, you ask? We just talked about busted movie options that give protection for Shine, for Imperial, and for the Omni deck, right? Let's, <laughs> what does it do for Gallimont? Let's, <laughs> let's take a look at Gallimont's movie <laughs> options, shall we? Uh... Main effect. For three costs, you may play Gilmon or Takaro from your hand without cost. Okay. Or from your or from your trash. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's that's cool. All turns when an opponent's level five or higher Digimon is played. Delay. Oh, okay. It must have some sort of like protection effect. One of your Digimon may digivolve into Gallimon in its name without being cost. Oh, so I don't get protection. <laughs> I I don't get Digivolution cost reduction. Oh man. My game plan is predicated on my opponent playing something which they can just not do and then to top it all off my new gallant mon that i get has shit protection because it's a your turn while you have zero or less memory this digimon isn't affected by your opponent's effects hey he gets a blocker now <laughs> finally by the way the digimon uh... with the fucking shield finally has blocker <laughs> Crazy. He has blocker uh, and he has no <laughs> way to restand himself after he attacks with his fucking stupid uh now he does. Spear. Oh now he does yeah. because the war growl when it affects oh, okay, okay, okay. an opponent's Digimon. Oh, so yeah. I have to delete an opponent's Digimon to be able to unsuspend. Are you guys getting the trend, audience? You listening? Gallimon is way too fair a deck for it to even like trade blows with the meta. 
I think by virtue of someone, just that one singular person winning an EU regional last format, you know, it can be done, but it's the out. Lychee has a better chance with fucking Alphamon than <laughs> everybody with fucking Agreed. Gallantmon. <laughs> so, and All right. The th Gallantmon is such an annoying fucking deck because the War Growl uh, wants to spend it, right? And then, yeah. usually, I think the deck still plays War Growl X, right? Whatever. That was it. Yeah, really. Look, no. I don't understand what the fuck. The deck is just. I don't understand. It's that deck has gotten so much support and none of it is fucking good. Because everything is too fucking fair. <laughs> yeah. That's literally what it is. Mikidrumon is such a good card because it's not a fair card. <laughs> clearly, Baron uh, does not like Tamers. Tamers is clearly their least favorite season. No, you can't say that. Mega Gargo Ace is bonkers. Yeah. I still, I I still <laughs> agree with what I'm saying. Mega Gargo Ace is, is good. Yeah. The rest of that line, That's besides Rapid Mon? Hey, let's see no. what happens when Justin. Gargomon is a trash card. All those, all, all those Gargomon Tamers cards are getting support in nineteen. So, let's see what happens when we get some of those cards and see what they do for these Tamers cards, Oops. since they couldn't get their own set and had to be shoehorned into the Cross Wars manga set. We we'll shall see. see. We're gonna get them as uncommons. That's what we're getting. Ooh, casual. He said, ooh, casual. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's our first casual deck we're talking about. I'd have to agree. Speed it up. I'd have to agree. It just. Yeah, I mean, he, um, he, do, he hasn't done Jackson in like forever. Not so only has it not even done Jackson. I don't think it's done shit since BT mode. 14. Yeah, it's, it's an unfortunately casual deck. If we're going to talk about casual decks. What is that, Mallow? Yeah, Mallow. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. So I, this is why he said that, right? It's because uh, D Boys is one of his favorite, all-time favorite decks. That's why he immediately went to the Mallow. Like, let's talk about Cash real quick. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, though, it's true though. Not so good. the big reason Mallow's even on the list is because us over in English, we are finally getting some tournament pack cards that Japan got. Um, main one here is Myotis X, which is a really good card from Mallow. On play when digivolving, pop a level four lore. On deletion, if you have Mal or sorry, not Mal, if you have Myotis or X antibody in its source, you can play a level six with Myotis Mon's name. So there are some really cool loops that you can do between Myotis Ace or Kenny Mon and Mummy Mon Tamer, as well as Myotis X. We know Mummy Loop is a thing, obviously. I just want to let you know that Mummy Mummy Loop did top last format. So uh yeah, no, pilot oriented. <laughs> Hey, I actually, where is she? I actually have two Lilithmons on here for a reason, because this Lilithmon is obviously the reason that like any sort of those loop decks work. And so, yeah, I would give you pilot oriented for mummy loop because obviously for, you know, <laughs> I don't even, want, I can't even talk about that deck because I like watched some gameplay on it and I was like, that's not for me. And if somebody were to ever pull that shit off against me, <laughs> have the win you earned it chief yeah i'm with you on that um but yeah lilithmon the bt3 lilithmon she is the literally loop decks do not work without her there's a reason because of jack raid because of her recursion because of her memory gain so she is on here separate from myotis because mummy loop that's what she represents and then there is the other lilithmon who is for a lilithmon centric tribal deck this is just casual. from me that I'm going to be playing casual until further notice because I don't think this deck had any tops whatsoever. No. Yeah, it was a Lilith loop deck that top. So, you know, as much as I'm coping Lilith Mon as a deck, you know, I'm going to try, but I can't say that it's ever going to do anything at all. Um, well, especially not working, until we get Lilith X. Everybody loves big titty goth mommy. So you get that <laughs> thing yeah, working, right. baby. We're, we're all in there with. Yeah, yeah, yeah we. We like getting things working and not just. All right, let's fucking let's go down the list, baby. Leviathan. Uh, Leviya X. Where Rogue do you guys Rogue think? Sleeper is cool with me. So? I'm cool. I guess, yeah. Pilot oriented Rogue Sleeper. Yeah, because it still does things every once in a while. It's not like it's it's not like it's falling out of the format. It's still around. <laughs> that, I think it'll still be around for future reference too. That deck had such Leviya, a, a weird so hard fall off. 
Uh, it's, it's a, a big super roller, coaster. roller coaster. Super roller coaster. It went from best deck in the format, and we were ostracized for that. Yeah. And then it fucking went off the cliff straight like this. It was like riding the high, and then the fucking curve just went bloop, right yeah. like this. And then somehow <laughs> and it, dropped it just off the face recovered. Of the planet. And then yeah. recovered a little. And, but it, re it recovered and then it got like a w. down here. Like, yeah, right it like got this. a W, though. It did get a dub in uh, BT15. And then it's still around currently. Yeah, I mean, it does what the deck does. Like, it's going to punish yeah. you for playing things by effects the same way that Imperial does. It's going to delete shit. It's going to be a deck that you have to play around. But I think yep. the, like, it new mod It does get the new, uh, is it the Siako X or is that? No, we already got those. Out? Yeah, we already got yeah, those. Yeah, okay, never mind. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I'd agree. I, yeah. I guess, I guess, yeah, this is one of those Real things sleeper. I'd say it's a sleeper pick. It's, it's a it, I wouldn't be surprised to see this deck top at all. Melga, I guess you can casual kind of utilize some of the new pilot tools. Oriented. He said casual. Uh, I'm cool. Pilot I don't oriented. know. Yeah, because you can utilize some of the new stuff from the Omni deck, and obviously you'll have native access to Omnimon Ace, <laughs> which is a big thing to consider. But the problem with this deck is the same problem with Mirage. People are going to play this deck to be an OTK nut brain. They're not going to play it any other way. So, yeah, but yeah, if you're gonna do if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, you have Mirage. So like, exactly. why even? Like, yeah, that, that's literally what it boils down to. I'll take Old Force over that too. Myself. What's the next deck? Omnizu? No, let's talk about Greymon since we talked about, you know, Malga Greymon I, Toolbox I, Pilot Oriented. Yeah, honestly, that deck is in a rough spot. You will right see now. one top. We'll yeah. see the one top. Yep. I don't even think we need to elaborate. That deck's just. It has got a struggle. Hey, we have a secret rare Greymon. Yeah, it's the Greymon card game least. again. It helps you, you know, build that <laughs> yeah. giant one stack when you, you you don't got stuff going on. You have the rookies to evil over again, and then you hope to God you uh, draw what you need to draw afterwards. You know. Yep. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I think I think we could see more like you know the promo black or Greymon OTK stuff with that. Possibly running around a little bit more just because you could like make a giant stack even better now. But uh, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Now we've got Dark Masters Omni Zoo, which Rogue is. Sleeper. Bottom Probably of there. Rogue Sleeper. Yeah, I don't think, think so. Top. I don't think it's top. Yeah. You think like with the Omni Ace and just all of its Imperial versatility? PM. Yeah. I mean, it, it has access to it, right? Like, it does. Yeah. I just don't think that. Uh, I just think it's a rogue secret pick. I think it's a good deck. It's one of those uh, things that yeah. just you see it randomly pop up and just like it will just you either know what to do against it or you don't. You just get straight bodied by it. You know yeah. what's gonna happen? And it's then the random Apocalypse drops. It's sitting here right now at the, uh, you know rogue sleeper. Come ex seven. We're not doing an ex seven tier list, but come ex seven. This is probably like. It's a better deck because it showed a mother, yeah. Yeah. Probably like a mid contender pick. Yeah. Because yeah, it showed a mother. I agree. Phoenix Mon. Uh I'd Rogue also I definitely say Rogue Sleeper. Um, it's a oh, deck that when it does what it fucking does. And it pops off. You it do pops so off. much in one turn. But it is such a combo intensive deck. In my opinion, it's just as combo intensive as um Mummy Loop. Because there's nah, so much. There's it's so not much. As bad as Mummy Loop. You don't think so? There's so much sequencing no. that goes on. Mummy Loop's entire game plan is what? Play Mallow Trash Security, right? Yeah, but you like that's way more combo intensive than Phoenix Mon. Right, you but Phoenix. You're not getting Phoenix Mon is about getting that one stack and you're good to go. You just swing out and everything pops off afterwards. Uh, Mummy Mon, you're not trying to build one stack. You're playing. You you're doing multiple stacks at once, like multiple. You just, sometimes you try and drop multiple mummy mon and Kenny mons to get your search and draws going and then like evo over them and then you just you have to make sure you evo over the correct one because they died in a turn and you want the um what's it called the, like mallow the mallow to, to die. die and so you have to make sure you sequence things correctly and stuff so i think it's way harder than that uh maybe it's run. because i've watched gino play the deck and gino plays it in a very like methodical game style um sure i have because the way that like he plays it, it's not predicated on like sure, like that one stack matters, but 
there are a lot of like micro level decisions to make in terms of what are you searching? What are you trashing? What are you grabbing back? What are you obviously what are you digivolving over? What when do you bounce your tamers? Because all of your tamers interact with that deck the way that, you know, the Arakenimon Mummy Mon tamers interact with Mummy Loop. So maybe it's not as combo intensive as Mummy Loop, but it's definitely a very you can't just single brain it. <laughs> all yeah. the way through no, regionals, you can't. No, no, no. which is why I would never play the deck as much as I really look like I I like it because I don't have the brain power for that. I couldn't do that for however many rounds. And the person that I think it was like second place or something at EU, yeah, um, props to them because that's that's a lot of thinking. But I I think yeah, I think it's a good deck there. It's a red deck. It has access to Crimson Blaze. <laughs> and I think that's another Which big thing to in consider. today's game. It does. Yeah. Unfortunately, it doesn't mal- matter for Gallantmon. <laughs> but uh, Tyrant. Um, I think it's a good I deck. Agree. Yeah, I think right there is fine. Uh, Rogue Sleeper pick just because, um, like, even now you see one here and there every once in a while. So it has decent matchups into certain situations. Like, what does certain of those decks like Ancient Guru do against a Tyrant when Tyrant set up? Not much can deal with it. Uh, redirect into it, stuff like that. I know in BT17 and JP, Tyrant had like a little resur- resurgence uh, that popped up for, for it because Tyrant, again, what do you do with Tyrant when you're set up? If you go Tyrant Shivama combo, there's not many decks that has an out to it. Like, I think Magna probably has the instant out, which is ST Magnamon. Um, but besides that, not many no, other heavens, decks kind of right? struggle with it. No, yeah, but you go, so you can't Heavens with Shiva on board. Oh, oh, oh. So you oh, go yeah, Tyrant yeah. Shiva, you, the instant out is like, all right, I'll just did you all have a Magna ST, balance Shiva, Heavens, GG, right? Yep, yep, yep. Um, again, it also depends on how the format is looking. If it's. it's really dependent but um yeah tyrant is still a tyrant thing that can do tyrant things right <laughs> like <Yep. laughs> but it's unfortunate thing is it's a green slow. deck N- forget slow it's a green deck and green decks for some godforsaken reason will always be like weirdly Ricky. inconsistent <laughs> yeah <laughs> weirdly you run 10 mega sometimes in, in green decks so i think that's good uh rapid x you get a Willis. Yeah, there's a Lopmon. No, sorry. There's a Terrier uh, Mon. Terrier and Gargo. But realistically, uh, you're probably not playing those in this deck. And it also uh, didn't do casual. much. I, I'm I kidding. Genuinely, uh, I'll put it's pilot just, I'm pilot pilot oriented. Was there even like a rapid top this format? Was, was there an actual rapid top? Just yellow vaccine. Hey, yo, casual. We don't want the casual. Know. I genuinely feel like it probably is casual, but those rapid moms are still going to run. <laughs> I do think that it is. Uh, you could put it above Hunt. Because, like, you know. You know, honestly, uh, throw Hunter, X, throw Hunter some casual um, at this point. I'm still. Uh, good job, finally. Yeah. I'll um. Be- like Rapid X on paper should do well against like New Mon and stuff, but because like other decks are around, like it just sucks sometimes right like magna's so, like to your earlier thing like what do you do against magna you don't this do anything that does absolutely I, I, fucking nothing. i just think literally every deck that's actually like a contender or meta defining is just worlds better than rapid like as a deck. unfortunately Honestly, rapid goes to a casual well its biggest thing is that it has access to mega gargo ace sure which is a good and card, but that's its biggest strong point. And <laughs> I just it said that's hasn't it. done anything. That's its biggest strong point. I don't know. It feels wrong to put this deck in casual. Because <laughs> we got a forty dollar a secret rare, just we got like a a Michael's boy on Rena. Because we got a forty dollar secret rare. Yes. I mean, I'm kind of <laughs> with you. I just. <laughs> hey yo, I, while you know, while we're at it, I'm just looking at it. You could throw Melga in casual. <laughs> I would say Greymon. I almost said Greymon, but I do think Greymon will get it. I think. 
Without the scrambles, I don't this, have this, much hope. I can see Greymon getting a top before Mel Garumon does in this format. I could see that as well. Do you see getting a top Greymon. before Gallantmon? Now, mind yeah. you, again, <laughs> Garumon is act like Gabumon. Like, there's like some really cool decks once Gabu Ace comes out where you can run like a Gabumon Garumon tribal, and like those decks yeah. are actually really awesome and cool. I think so, that's like the biggest downfall for both Greymon and Agu and Gu and. Sorry, Greymon and Gurumon. <laughs> Gurumon. <laughs> yeah, not yeah. having the, the bond aces is a big problem for yeah, them. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, 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 that feels wrong, I know, but I'm kind of with the... It just doesn't do... like. Okay, let me reassess this, though. Is it actually better than anything else on here? I don't think it is, though. What, Greymon or Rapidmon? I'm looking at Rapid. I'm just making sure that I'm not making an ass out of myself. Well, okay. I, so, like, here's the problem, right? Against Demon Lords, that's a battle of attrition that you'll probably lose. Against Omni Ace, though. your armor purge means absolutely nothing in face of a bottom deck. Rapid against, helps against shine. The Agus that's on board or Gabus, but, like, besides that, the moment they drop the War Grey or Metal Garurumon, like, does it matter what Rapid does? I, no. I think the main argument against Rapidmon is if you're already wanting to play Rapidmon, why wouldn't you just you play, play Yellow Vaccine, vaccine? Armors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, like, why wouldn't you just play that instead? Like, I think that that's a fair point, though. Like, if you want to play Rapidmon, please don't Take this as us saying like the deck is like, awful. Rapidmon is a great card. I love but Rapidmon. I still have it. Better it. Top top for it. There's no, yeah. there's no like you know, there's no math to it. Like, it's like what top does it do? I, and I bet you Rapidmon Tribal would do great into a world. I does. just don't. Yeah. Think, do I just don't think it would do I've well played, into a regionals. I've played it with great success, and the reason I haven't taken it into regionals is because I don't have any faith in the deck to perform at a regional level for me. Yeah, none in the slightest bit. And there's like, nothing, and there's also so nothing much. wrong with uh, casual never. decks. Decks, some decks are just meant to be casually played. Currently, Even yep. with a forty dollars secret, that hurts more. But also, the forty dollars <laughs> yeah. secrets he's playing in vendors. So, so right. there is that. Yes, that means they hold value, which is good. Uh, red hybrid slash ancient gr ancient Greymon. Sorry. Uh, blue, blue, blue. I don't know anything about uh, like this iteration I don't know of the much deck. right now. Yeah, I want to say based on like the, the limited knowledge I know of it, I think it is Rose Sleeper Pig because like Ancient Greymon does nowhere near anything what Ancient Guru does, but like There's you can still pop gap. off with you could do you could pop off and do some cool things with it. So that's why I want to say Rose Sleeper Pig because people again, Ancient Greymon has fans, so I could see people like. Uh, labbing the shit out of it for the for the um, I was about to say season for the um, whatever for the, the time format. being <laughs> the can format I, just... I couldn't think of the word format at that moment but yeah I can see people labbing the shit out of it to figure things out if you want to consider like red, regular red hybrid emperor gray in the same thing I could like I said I think there's two versions of it rogue sleeper for both can, can we just talk about like how there is a clear difference in how Bandai perceives like red decks Greymon to versus blue decks, Garumon, which is weird. That and also red decks versus blue decks like ancient. They're like, oh, sec plus one is enough, right? So here, here hold this on play slash when did evolving and just pop pop a Digimon. Meanwhile, ancient is bouncing lowest level and then constantly bouncing security to hand. Oh, like Which on is your turn. Crazy. Yeah. I don't know. I think that it's been very clear that for whatever godforsaken reason, they just do not value red as a color, like for a very long time. I mean, BT fucking six, Gabubon versus fucking Agubon, which was the clear better card. There was no shot. Yeah, there was no so. contest. Like, <laughs> just to fa like for for whatever godforsaken reason, Agubon had to delete something to trash his security. Gabu Bond just got to unsuspend a million times and do whatever it wanted. You know what's even funnier? In that same time period, our best red deck probably ever in Jasmon OTK yep. was promptly nerfed. And the likes of Mirage and uh, every like o OTK deck from BT9 like had time to do their thing before they got hit. Yeah. 
Let's let's uh, preface real quick. I step back real quick. Are you saying best red deck as in mono color? There's no other things yes. in it. Yeah, because just like a straight best red deck was definitely like BT12 War Greymon. No, just like I mean, I all right. So I guess yeah, that was a red deck, but you had a black tamer, I guess. Sure. Okay. Fine. So like fine. you had elements of like black, you, you know, air quote you uh, straight, control you or whatever. Straight mono red. I mean, like just straight Probably like right. red Honestly, aggro, you know. Best straight mono red deck might just be like red hybrid. I mean, in terms of results, yeah, but like Jessmont yeah. also was that. It was just promptly nerfed. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. They, they, they hit Jessmont. They said, they said, y'all are still playing this one well, set I, later. I also think they all like. <laughs> I there were time periods where they'd go a long time without hitting stuff, and then there's right now. Like, wow, it's been a minute. I feel like. Because like, really think about it, it hasn't been that long. Because remember, they hit Apocalypse Mom Apocalypse. for us, the start of BT15. Like two months ago, well, right? Weeks, two I, weeks, in, right? So, like, realistically, it's just because we were in a format of BT15 for what three months, I think it was. I think yeah. what happened so, like, was uh, we got used to it's not that long. They they tried to hit Apocalypse Mom so many times, we got like three ban rows <laughs> right. just because they were trying to hit <laughs> Turbo on Apocalypse Mom. And then they yeah, were like, was two of them. they finally were like, fuck it, we're hitting Apocalypse Mom. And then that was it. Yeah. All right, what do we got next? Dorbic. Dorbic? Which, uh, I'm going to be I'm honest. So, I feel like Dorbic's casual. It I, would be if there wasn't a... I'm, I'm, gonna go to, I'm only going to call it stupid because I've lost to it, but only because there's this stupid <laughs> Ragna Dorbic Oriumon OTK deck that has topped and that when it does its thing, you literally cannot do anything against this deck. But its biggest problem is the consistency of pulling off the combo. The combo is you build up an Oriumon stack and you just do whatever Oriumon does, which is, uh, I think it's like, it can be deleted by your opponent's effects. Uh, you combo that with some ex-antibody cards, like the Doramon that you can't be affected by your opponent's effects, Digimon effects or something. So you now have this Oriumon stack, then you hard drop this Dorbic, and then you go Ragna OTK for game as you have fucking like, 16 sources to burn for security and swing for game is basically what it boils down to i've gotten my ass whooped by it and it has topped and is the only reason it's even on here because i acknowledge like i've said previously about dorbic that like if this deck like sees its shit you're probably not doing anything about it but realistically like yes this would be a casual deck but this oriumon Dorbic Ragna version is a pilot oriented deck. There's one person who can do it. I think his name is like Jesse. So shout out to Jesse. Uh, well, I should be like a completely wrong name. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Sukuyamon, my lovely deck that casual is casual. I don't even need to talk about it. Throw the shin casual. Casual. <laughs> casual. Yes. So it got, I don't even it need got to new support. It got a tamer and nope. it got a new Sukuyamon. And Garbage. Casual. Yeah. That's about it. What do we got? Now? That's about it. <laughs> Listen, all my Sukuyamon lovers out there, maybe kind of expect the deck profile from me at some point. Hopefully, I don't know. Nah, we don't care. Next. <laughs> uh, we got Pulsemon Tribal, another casual deck. Casual. This is Sukuyamon here. Here's the biggest problem with Pulsemon. I can tell all you Pulsemon enjoyers right off the bat. They just gave us our SR Pulsemon. Like, we didn't even have our SR Pulsemon last set, which is a travesty. And this entire support is kind of built around just Takami Kazuchi. Like, sure, it can work on its own, but it's okay. Shroudmon is great, but it still costs five to Digivolve. Like, are there the people that enjoy the... playing Pulsemon? Yes, surprisingly. Wait. I, too, am one of them, weirdly enough. Um, I just like its, like, variants. The biggest problem with Pulsemon is that, like Gallantmon, it is a too fair deck. Absolutely too fair. So... Because it is too fair, even with Takami Kazuchi, you ain't doing much of anything. And because we're talking about Takami Kazuchi, where he at? Takami Kazuchi is right Contender. here. Uh, Contender. Right here, yeah. probably. Um, now, that arguably, deck is Fenri nuts. can have two different builds. Because if you prefer to play like the current iteration of the deck, that's one build. 
But if you're going to play Takamikizuchi, rebuild the deck. You're playing all the new support from 15 and 16 and 17, which means you're playing just a couple things from your old deck, like the Aegis, the Lugas, maybe the Lugars. But your entire game plan is to get out Takamikazuchi and tell your opponent, I'm going to give you 10 memory, but not really, because I'm going to set the memory to three. <laughs> I'm going to gain a memory. And then so dumb. I'm going to swing, trash one of my security, trash one of your security, unsuspend, swing, do that again. <laughs> like, deck is stupid. Um, Takamikazuchi is an insane card. <laughs> it's a secret. So for those of you who enjoy the deck, that's a secret for you to search out. Is a arguable four of secret you can probably get away with three um, but your entire game plan of Fenry now just becomes getting out Takami Kazuchi so luckily that's like the only secret you need uh, your SRs you don't you I think just the Lugamon is the only SR you need because you're playing the rare Fenrys and the rare Kazuchis so it's really not that expensive a deck when all things are said and done so if you like Fenrir, if you're a Fenrir enjoyer, that's your new iteration. That's what you're playing. And because we're talking about SOC, Dex Doru Goromon. Uh, I don't necessarily know if it's better than Fenrir. I don't know where exactly it lies, but it is a damn good deck. It has so much more resiliency because of its new Dex line that lets you prevent deletion by digivolving from the trash. Dex Doru is just de-digivolving and popping shit when it's digivolving like it's it's probably it's not even like obviously it's not a mono color it's not a mono color black or purple deck for that matter because it's dual color but it's probably like black's best deck so to say uh because i'd probably categorize it as a black deck more than i guess it depends things. on what's i know later on we knew what the better version is but i guess we'll yeah. see how players will play it in Yen, and whether it's like the Fet, the uh, Luga package, or they're gonna stick with the Doramon version, and if that works, that works. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it should be interesting to see where Dex Doragora goes. If you guys haven't checked out East's video, he did a whole thing where he walked through each iteration of his Dex Doru deck, and he said, "This is what I tried. This is what didn't work. This is where I went, and this is the changes I made." It's a really cool video. It's similar to the videos that I made. When I top that ultimate cup with Magnum on armors called the Digi Breakdown. So check that stuff out if you like it. It's a cool walkthrough into the deck building process, the thoughts that goes into it. Um, but yeah, that deck is there. What the f is this? Is this Argomon? This is Argomon. Oh, Argomon damn. casual. Absolutely I don't even know what this deck does. Casual deck. <laughs> what does this um, deck do, Dan? Locks down your opponent's tamers? I, not uh, good is what it does. <laughs> Eosmon. <laughs> Eosmon. I feel like Eosmon. I, I casual. I have trashed on Eosmon, but I've only trashed on Eosmon because of Dan. To be honest, I've never actually watched Last Evolution Kazuna. What? So. How's that up to me? You always said the deck was dog shit, not me. Yeah, because you. Yeah, because you said it. So I just went along with it. Right, because the deck is trash. Right. I, I just went. I don't actually. Movie. I don't actually know. But my point is, I don't actually know what the deck does first of all all i know is it does like some sort of like swarm shenanigans and then you knew what the right. original version did let's, uh, let's take a step to back. be honest i casual. still could give two fucks let's, let's, take a time casual. Casual. let's take a deeper dive in this if the deck was good you would know what it did <laughs> like, it, you know what there you go right <laughs> <laughs> There are going to be some new spawn enjoyers out there who are like, oh, you guys the new are support, which is solid. Don't get me wrong. Like the new lines is pretty like solid cards, but just the way the deck works is just still trash. The word has been spoken. I know nothing. I refuse to acknowledge Eosmon and I'll probably never acknowledge Argomon either. You think you think this Argomon deck would ever do anything if they got the, the BT3 Argomon unrestricted? I don't know. I like. I don't remember like the, the new cards. I don't even think. I can't tell you. Think, Probably not. I don't even. Honestly, I don't even know why that card's restricted because I don't think there's any green deck that would do well at this point. I think that's just a future game design card. Yeah. Yeah. Ban. I'm with you. 
Uh, Machine Dramon. Okay, this is Casual. a weird one. No. Mm -mm. I don't agree with that. I, I the Machine Dramon player here said it's casual. I'm willing to hear Dan out. Why, why Dan? Why cash? Tell me what deck is going to outspeed it. In terms of speed, every deck. You'll have exactly. to play Purple Base and you'll have to play Ukomon. But I think exactly, because you play Purple Base and you play Ukomon. Plays, like, I, I like and don't like the, pur the Purple Base because now you have, you lose that consistency of ha being able to play your options early if you need to, which is like the searchers and stuff. Like you need to see analog man ASAP. If you don't, you're SOL. Um, and then when that happens, it's like oof. You know what I'm saying? Now you have to hard play your um, your potential fours. If you have rare mons in the deck, if you're not running rare mons, you're gonna have to um, play your fives, and you're just in a weird situation. Obviously, you're gonna set up your machine mon stuff faster with the purple base, but I don't know. Eh, I just don't see it doing well regardless and IPM just F's it up now so like who cares that's a fair point my only argument was that you get the chaos on which gives you sure. a different set of protection that chaos but, you talk about the new chaos on that you can't yes. even use you can't even digivolve over a machine Jamon? <laughs> yes that one it's the, the one that Bro, requires the you the one that requires you, you to absorb it with the chaos X. this yes. is what you need to do you need to play the deck the way it the standard way, quote unquote, which is like your stack. Yes. Go to BT11 yeah. Machine Jamon, take your top five, get that Chaos Jamon underneath, go into EX, uh, whatever, Machine Jamon, uh, tuck three sources underneath, then go to KSX. You need so much to happen for that to like pop off for it to work correctly. Like, All right. Like, like uh, Mike said, the Machine Jamon player has spoken. So, like, I love Machine Jamon. Don't get me wrong. But like it's just currently where it's at versus everything else is tough. Like I guess especially with Cyber Dramon Ace. If you're a, yeah, if you can get there and they're not there yet, like kudos to you. But like Dio Borma is gonna f you up like out of nowhere if you if you run into it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like it's just rough for Machine Jamon right now. You got that one, Chief. I hope. I pray I'm wrong on that one, and I see at least one top. I pray I do. <laughs> You got that one, Chief. Uh, next one, Imperial Fighter Mode Virus. Casual. Casual. That deck, Definitely first of all, casual. no scrambles. Uh, so that no deck scrambles. is just significantly not good at this point with no scrambles. Um, it, it's just not good. It's not good. I don't understand. There's At no point in my entire life should anyone that likes Imperial Jermon ever play that version of the deck that can just play the Blue Green Green. Hey, yo, the way you said that. I'm just being absolutely <laughs> I don't honest. Disagree. You should not waste your money building that. First of all, I don't even. I'm pretty sure the Dino Beamons are still kind of that deck. The secrets are like yeah. a couple bucks. Like you, the cards in that deck are like weirdly like not like super expensive, but like you should not fucking waste your money like on a deck. If you have it built, fine. Go ahead and play it. I don't think it's good. Prove me wrong on top with it. I'd be cool with it. But yeah, I think that deck is fucking trash. Damn, I was just thinking I about it, like that machine Jamal stops Numa from getting like DP neg. So like that's good. Are you putting in power it's oriented now? That's my I'm, point. Like, like it's a good enough deck, but you're right you, about the speed. If you if you see your like the correct pieces, you can keep swinging over a Magna X. If we I have Dorbic and pilot oriented, we can have machine uh, the pilot oriented. Yeah, I guess we. Yeah, yeah. And it's definitely better than Gallimon, and it's definitely better than Jessmon, and it's definitely better than Royal Knights. Yeah, you know, it's 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 not. It's just like. It's rough because like if you man, it's rough. I played against that mirror. I played against it with new money. I just like, alright, cool, I'll just go out bum rush you. Basically. An ancient guru doesn't care either, right? You just go, hey, you I can't be blocked or redirected, right? And I'm gonna keep bouncing your security. Well, you can know. kind of pop their tamers, which is nice. The only problem is that yeah, now they have yeah. tamer recursion from trash. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Leopardmon. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -da. yeah. I'll, Topped. I'll bite my tongue. 
<laughs> it topped the regional, so pilot oriented. Shit. Um, Cliff has major leopard. Uh, that all four sky has major leopard mon cope. <laughs> I mean, I don't yeah. get me wrong. I love my leopard mon, but I don't cope leopard like mon too, as much yeah. as Cliff le- copes leopard mon. <laughs> Cliff and Leppy, those two Cliff and Leppy cope leopard mon, and you know what? They do it. So pilot oriented. Uh, that's about all I can say about it. Uh, just on par with Dorvik. Leomon. Casual. <laughs> Casual. I don't recall if this deck topped. It was a straggler here and it just stayed in because I couldn't remember. I'm um, cool with casual. It's a Galaxy? fun deck. It's a cool deck. Casual. <laughs> it hasn't had any tops. So. It's uh, Mike's favorite area. Casual. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> Mike, how's it feel to be ousted like that? I don't feel any type of way. Dan can call me casual all he wants. I would like to remind him we have the same amount of regional. <laughs> yeah, Grace Nova, Galaxy, no tops. Uh, good. I've accepted that, I'm but... bad at the game, so it's all right. <laughs> the speed, speed for the deck is... It's okay. Grace Nova is trash. So Dan, we're you're not bad casual. at the game, bro. You just casual. I'm, I'm bad at the game. No, you just casual. I'm, I'm bad at the game. Oh. No, 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 I can't even win casually anymore. So <laughs> I'm just bad at the game. Anyways, <laughs> uh, Fang Long, uh, Davas, pilot oriented. Definitely yeah, pilot cool. oriented. Its problem is speed, mainly because it requires you to hard drop these fucking seven Sevens. cost yeah. ultimates. The, so. Also, the problem is just like. The format just changed so drastically inst- like overnight from one format to another for it. So like that it just, handing your opponent it down, you know, however much memory is ASAP. Yeah, because it's very Don't. hard for them to deal with Magna X, especially in like pre like like pre BT seventeen, like BT sixteen. It struggled because of Magna X, and it's like all right, I'll just bum rush Imperial. I don't care. You have that. Um, a five, I will just get rid of it anyway somehow, and that's, yeah. that's how at least I feel when it comes to Imperial versus that. Um, yep. Newmon obviously just bum rushes it. Obviously, if you're playing Davis and you get Fang along, GG to Newmon, but like they were able to just outspeed you. So, like, those are like the main three decks I feel like that they struggled against. And then EX6 comes out, I would say the better hard drop deck, it's seven great, di- uh, seven demon lords, right? Like, you. You're playing sixes off the rip and you're just deleting yep. things, getting rid of their stuff. Like it fell off hard. Relying on that ace counterplay. Yep, I'd agree with yeah. that. Uh yeah, I'd agree with that. Somewhere like right here. Uh Ragna, it got a win. It got a win. Uh so definitely pilot oriented. Um, I'd probably put it like right here. Um It's cool with me. I think it's a cool deck. Um I just it's definitely cool. It has some set of resiliency and it's a blast DNA deck, which is cool. The main problem is like, I don't know, it's Ragna. So, no, like, that's a pretty good set. I feel the exact same way. I feel the exact Historically exactly speaking, it's, <laughs> the, historically speaking, it's just not looking too bright. I love the deck. I'm excited to play it. But historically speaking, it's Ragna. So. Yeah. No, I feel until like proven otherwise like I think it's the perfect pilot oriented pick I think you can do well with it if you practice the deck uh, it has tools to deal with things it has some semblance of protection but if you're really seriously trying to compete there are probably better picks and even better rogue sleeper picks to, to you know play with so Agreed. fish swarm slash shang peng mon it Casual. got a top therefore it is a pilot oriented no, 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 pilot oriented baby we made it, we made it pilot oriented no, 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 no. you're not taking that one from me Mike no, 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 no. fish swarm me top A baby oh my god <laughs> alright alright all right. top now, A Zhang Peng is the savior that we oh, all needed as yeah, whoa, fish swarm whoa. players <laughs> calm down <laughs> I don't know this guy what said the they got the fucking Messiah over there. Oh, you, shit. Of fish. you see that Chinese god bird? You know what I'm saying? God like damn. that's all we needed, baby. That's all we needed. That- and a and a bum ass Beomon while we're at it too. Is that Mastimon I see on there next stuff? Is that is that, that a Mastimon? That is Mastimon. I'm that putting it right next casual. to Ragnar. That deck fucking casual. Sucks. 
Casual. It has a secret Mireille. So I feel like it's worse than Ragna because which is insane. Ragna, yeah, because Ragna has protection and me and Mastamon doesn't. So once you remove the level five, it's like it's I, so easy I, to just get rid of that. They have to like blast DNA on their own turn, like not blast DNA, but they have to like get into that DNA on their turn and sometimes that's not good but like you don't want to yeah. wait because it's so easy to pop a five nowadays yep yeah, I'll especially be honest, a 6k uh, 6 play cost yeah I could yeah. probably be persuaded to put it to like the bottom of pilot oriented but I genuinely just don't think it's a good deck I actually like I, I could be persuaded I didn't say I don't I didn't say it should go I said I could be persuaded to put there by like, uh, again, if, like if, if we got tough. a strong argument in the comments in this video that was like now here's why mass launch out or anything i could i could maybe change my opinion i just don't think it's a good deck i don't think that any of the new cards it got fixed any of the issues it had um yeah that's just how i feel <laughs> yeah um it's it's tough time out here as a Mastamon enjoyer. It really does just feel worse than Ragna, which is hilarious to say. Dominimon seven great angels. Uh, it's a deck with no tops, therefore it has to be a casual deck. But I feel like it has the most potential out of all casual decks. Do you yeah. like the angels deck? So yeah. I think that in uh, BT eighteen ish, EX seven ish, this deck actually gets. Why? So I said so. <laughs> no, I do think it's actually. I think it's actually a good deck, though. Um, I don't think it's I gonna. I do too. I don't think it's. I don't know if it's gonna win any major events, just because it's kind of weirdly out there. Like it's a. It's not a. It's a it's very out there deck. But I think it's right, actually it's such a, good a deck. weird one. Yeah. I agree. It's such a weird. Yeah. I think it has like a lot. Like I said, a lot of potential. And like, if somebody's a an angel enjoyer. I think they top with it, definitely. If they if they put in the yeah. work, I think the I think it could. I'm a, is, I'm a Barney. It just I think it requires it's... a lot of labbing. Yeah, more I, like I think this deck has the edge over Mastimon. Yeah, I think it's got the potential. I think that if you put in some serious time and effort and came up with a spicy deck list, I could see a top with that thing. I think casual is we'll fine put for it now. In. I, I think casual. I think I think we talked ourselves into pilot oriented. Darnie's convinced it. <laughs> <laughs> More so that I, I can't make any arguments for Mastimon, but I can make arguments for Seven Great Angels. Which is, not again, I just, let's talk about Mastimon again. I love that deck. I love playing that deck. That's a bad deck. It's a bad, it's a bad deck. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, and I'd say proven I, otherwise. I hope to myself so hard into being like, this is a playable deck. This is good. The amount of like mental fortitude you need to even like, be like the least bit competitive with that deck is fucking insane. Like the mental yeah. gymnastics you have to do to justify giving someone eight every turn. I heavy agree with you there. Yep. Yep. Crazy. Shakamon casual. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily casual. know like where, but like somewhere I, I, there. I it's, a it's cool, casual. It, <laughs> it's a cool see. gimmicky deck, but what tends to happen? Is you get this cool pop off turn where you wipe out your opponent's security and then you have troubles closing the game out. <laughs> so, um, I'd like to see it do more, but unfortunately not. That's Chirubimon. another deck where is an, I was about to say it's another deck kind of like um, Davis, where you have to give your opponent a lot of memory to work with, and there's, sometimes there's no payoff. Like you have yeah. to have the ace play in hand already, and like sometimes you don't want to go into the ace play, but you kind of need to. Like it's a weird. <laughs> gimmicky deck like you're playing Gilmons at low end and stuff it's weird yeah Cherubimon is on here to sig um significant sig oh my goodness words are hard what the fuck were you saying significant <laughs> oh, I can't say that hold on hold on Marty got me effed up on that one Cherubimon is on here to <laughs> <laughs> yo it's late it is late <laughs> In it's my here. head, I am saying it perfectly fine. It's just not coming out here at the moment. It's here to represent. There you go. The Alliance deck. Um, Alliance, Cherubimon, Lopmon, Terriamon, etc. You can take this and play it with Rapid X, but 
that's a heavy top end to commit to. So two separate decks. Mm, it's still a casual deck. Yeah. It has a cool <laughs> pop off. I seen um, Gino play it. It has some cool things you could do with it, but still casual. It's a cute deck. Do I think it can top more so than Angels? No. Uh, no. No. I think Angels is more resilient. I think it's a great deck. It's a great casual deck. You'll have fun playing it. I think that's like a big thing about like our casual decks. Like you'll have fun playing these decks. It's not like I you usually won't, have, have more fun playing the casual playing decks than I play the than like any of the top decks typically. Right. This I is mean, just this is a competitive tier list. So competitively speaking, don't do it to yourself. Don't do it to yourself. I, I just love playing bad decks. I think it's my problem. So. Well, that's why, like, there's some there's some decks on here that are fun that are kind of bad at the same time, but yes. are also good. Like, Omnizoo, that's kind of, like, a, that's a good deck, but it's also a bad deck, and that's why. <laughs> yeah, it's a bad deck, because sometimes you got to hand over five memory, but there's more five payoff. Memory. Your sometimes you got to hand over fucking <laughs> 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 We got Chaos Mode on here to uh, represent <laughs> uh, a Lusamon tribal deck. Um, because I have actually seen a it cool played. Deck. Um, probably Very casual, cool. but that's a cool fucking deck. Definitely casual. It's definitely a it uh, was BT eighteen waiting room. Yeah, definitely. Somebody played a list against me at the three v three, which was a super fucking awesome list, and I actually want to build it. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. You definitely would love to wait to BT eighteen so you can actually play like the real deck but even just playing it now is fun because there's so much thought that can go into building it and making it function my problem with it is there's no payoff there's a lot of setup and everything but you're probably not closing that game out easily which is the biggest issue uh barbamon <laughs> oh wait hold on there we go um it's only on here because it was a new deck from ex6 but realistically speaking, I have never seen a Demon Lord get more disrespected than Barbamon. Thank God we're getting Barbamon X because I have no fucking clue how they're going to fix anything that they fucking did with this shit. Like, this is probably the know. worst casual deck that you can play because you probably won't even have fun while you're doing it. You probably hate Jeez. yourself for doing this to yourself. Like, I love the idea of the deck. I love Don Devi. I love what the, I love the concept of what Barbamon does as a deck but that's it I would hate myself for doing that to myself yeah I'm kind hey, of Don dude. David's probably better than uh, Barba yeah exactly Beelzemon oh, Rogue uh, Sleeper I'm going Rogue Sleeper yeah. that's a good ass deck honestly the new Beelzemon is so fucking good alright let's relax Farney you can keep it back there I put it right here I, I like the new it. Beelzemon is really good. Yeah, uh, the new Beelzemon is really good. Trash four, uninhibited, and then <laughs> if you have Tenemark, get a D Digivolve, but also being able to have Rush on main body, so you can do some shenanigans with Balmon, where you know, swing die that Beelzemon come out mill swing Rush. This is also Beelzemon one of those X, decks more that's shenanigans. In, a, in a weird spot, I think, because I feel like it's really in between Pilot Oriented and Rogue Sleeper because. Yes. I think it's a rogue deck, but it's a rogue deck only if you have the right person piloting. Yes, absolutely. Right. If that makes yes. sense. Like, not anyone is just going to be able to sit down and play Beelzebub properly. They're going to not do things right. Um, but I think it is a rogue deck. You just really do need the right person piloting. Remember, there was once upon a time where we called this deck a, a helmet deck, <laughs> a pick up and go deck. To be fair, I mean, yeah. But it was I mean, a helmet. It was, we described but... it as a helmet deck with a really high ceiling. Yeah, that's true. It was a helmet deck before EX2 Infma. That's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. Man, I wish we had that card back to four. Stop. Stop. In today's meta, no, come on. No. Come, we're not talking about that this spot. Absolutely not. All right, no. our last deck, uh, Belfa Rage or Belfa I don't know why I called it Belfa Rage. Yeah, Belfa Rage. Uh, uh, I'm still pilot pilot oriented. There it's getting is dubbed a, now as a new version with the Dark Masters Belfmon yep. version. Yep, which is pretty cool. So you just, I mean, you continue doing what Belfmon does in general, but now you have the added trash father of the DMs, and then you get to the Apocalypse pop off. 
Uh, that's pretty cool. I would say it's a rogue pick. Not even rogue, sleeper pick. I think it's something that more so than being pilot oriented, like like Dark Masters Omni Zoo, like somebody's gonna play it and you know, first of all, your opponent's not gonna know what the fuck you're playing. And then by the time they figure it out, it might be too late to to adjust. And then shit's gonna happen. And then you're gonna be like, all right, cool. And then you hopefully close out that second game swiftly. Because you're playing this yeah. with eight Ukomon is what it boils down to. This deck yeah. is good because eight Ukomon. Because you're running eight yeah, Ukomon. Four analog use as well, just to get your uh, trash going, your uh, everything filtering. Um, you're also playing the new rage mode. A rela- new rage mode allows you to trash was a three cards in hand, which is yep. super good for rage uh, Belfmon in general with the deck because your whole point is keeping four cards or less in hand. So you can proc the uh, other rage modes, getting a uh, second attack plus one and then a spin, whatever yep. it is. Yep. And then plus 3k, plus 3k, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah, that's that's it. I'm just taking a quick look over the list. I mean, I kind of like I like where everything is. I mean, there's some random things you could change positions in, but I like where they are on each level. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's a pretty good representation of the meta. Like, we're definitely going to see a lot of all these decks in meta defining and contenders. You're going to see a few of these decks in Rogue and Sleeper. I wouldn't be surprised to see any of these decks here except Shangpeng. Like everything behind here, I would be surprised to see in some capacity. Uh, even uh, I feel like I talked Royal Knights into like casual. <laughs> I think Royal Knights is a casual deck. <laughs> I, am. I think, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I talked myself into that. I. Jasmine and Better Deck, yes. Machine Jamon, yeah. I think all of these decks, I wouldn't be surprised to see like the first six top, and I would be surprised to see the next six Just top. Just being I a better deck than Royal Knights it. rubs me wrong. It does, but it's it's fair. And then yeah, all of these, I I say I'm pretty content with this in some way or fashion. Yeah, I, I don't think the order of where they are at really matters too much. But- Agreed. So, yeah, that is it for our definitive BT-17 Secret Crisis competitive meta tier list. It's a lot of keywords I'm throwing in there for the YouTube analytics. If you guys don't know why the f- if you guys don't know why we name these videos the way that we do, because uh, we want you guys to watch it, right? Like, would you have clicked on it if I said, like, BT-17 tier list? This is like, you maybe, it, on you, it? Know, you, you, you named it, this might be our tier list. <laughs> This might be our definitive BT-17 meta-defining secret crisis competitive. T- I don't A-OK know. A-OK <laughs> tier list. <laughs> it's an A-OK DGU tier list, but no, that's it. This is probably, um, this is a tier list. That's what you name it. It is. It's probably a tier list. You probably should click on it. If you guys have any opinions on like the positioning of stuff, as always, let us know in the comments. We're always open to the discourse on it. Um, it's a fun time, you know, especially looking back retrospectively. You know, we're going to have, I want to say like a month and a half of BT-17 alone before we get EX-7. So it'll be fun looking back in about two months when we get EX-7 to see like where things turned out. And then in another two and a half, three-ish months when we get really special booster. Uh, to see like where all this stuff turned out but you know we're always open to the discourse always open to talking this will be posted in our discord as a picture in our uh, specific podcast because this is a podcast obviously not just a tier list in our specific podcast forum called Lamb Shop so you can see the picture you can talk about anything you want in there and you don't have to worry about your conversation getting drowned away by main chat so look forward to that with that being said, uh, parting words. Now, I haven't done one of these in a while. <laughs> Wrap it before you tap it, baby. Let's go. Play your casual decks. This, have your fun. <laughs> this is why we fired you in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> and that is it for today's episode of Digipod, the digital podcast. And so until we talk to you guys the next time, peace out. Peace. Catch you on the next one.